Now in center ring, spotlight on him. How will he fare? Waiting in the other corner, the Hampton Pirates. They'll have a lot to say about that. That matchup, next. Aggie Stadium on the campus of North Carolina A&T, the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference football game of the week. Hampton taking on 12th ranked North Carolina A&T. Hi everyone, along with Mark Gray, Dwayne Ballenwell, we alluded to Mr. Hollingsworth earlier. He may have a good day today, but boy, the man he's replacing, big shoes to fill. Boy, you talk about having to fill mammoth shoes. Maurice Hicks is simply the greatest running back in the history of North Carolina A&T. When you think of the likes of Barry Turner, James White, George Ragsdale, he did all this in just 19 games, averaging just about eight yards a carry, and he was a physical back who knew how to get to the outside and take it to the house. He will be sorely missed, but if there is one kid who can step into the challenge as a few, as a true freshman, pardon me, it would be Hollingsworth. This is a kid that's played in the last four games. He's got four touchdowns, including this big one against Jackson State. He too is averaging around eight yards a carry, and he really has the stuff that dreams are made of. If I could borrow a phrase from a movie, Dwayne, a uh, star is born? I don't know if Barbara Streisand or Mitzi Gaynor are here, but nonetheless, a star may be born today. You're right. For Hampton, a man that's already a star, Zuriel Smith. Big week. We saw him last week. And he, he really shined like the true star on Hampton's offense. He was able to stretch the defense down against Bethune-Cookman. Hampton was so effective with the passing game because they ran the ball so effectively. You saw him off the play action. Here he's physical getting into the end zone and then here taking a flanker screen apparently no he gets into the secondary and takes it to the house. Three TDs last week and nine catches. He's going to be a big factor as we look at our USA Ways quarterback comparisons for quarterback Tim Frazier who's really the captain of the Hampton offense right now. He really has uh, control of the pirate ship so to speak and Damian Phillips is going to have to make more plays in the passing game for the Aggies to take some of the pressure off of Hollingsworth. His real talent is freshman running back. Well, this matchup will have huge bearing on the championship race in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Hampton coach Taylor told us earlier, the loser is done. Kickoff when we come back. Borough, North Carolina, we begin set for a kickoff. The Aggies have won the kickoff and elected to defer, putting their defense on the field first. For more on changes in that unit, let's check in with the third member of our crew, Tali Carr. Hey, thanks, guys. A big shakeup on the Aggie defense today in that inside linebacker position. Their top two guys are out. Senior Bryce McLean has left the team for personal reasons, so he is an Aggie no more. And sophomore Charles Parham is out with an injury. So getting the start will be freshman James Francis. He'll get the start plus the ball of the playing time, I wouldn't be surprised if this Hampton offense tries to test the young fellow and see what he's made of on the field. Tolly, you're right. Tolly, we had a conversation earlier with offensive coordinator Fred Case for Hampton, and he said that is something they will think about whenever they run into young, untested personnel. And the difference between Hampton over the last couple of weeks, yeah, you will continue to see the no-huddle offense, but they want to establish a running game. They know that A&T is not as vulnerable as the statistics would indicate however they do want to throw the ball deep but they're going to set it up using the run you saw the series numbers 16 14 2 hampton leads winning last year 31 28 we are underway from aggie stadium the miat game of the week terrence patrick falls on the ball inside the 10-yard line, which is where the Hampton defensive unit will take over. I don't know if we can get a look at that again. I'm anxious to see whether or not that ball hit the sideline and was out of bounds. That was a great kickoff by Leonard Nesbitt. I'm sorry, uh, tell us Bolden. And let's see. Well, the official was right there. He had a much better look than I had. Well, here come the Hampton Pirates, led by the sophomore, Timothy Frazier. 647 yards, five TDs. We had him last week against Bethune-Cookman. He really seemed to step up in that game. They began from the six-yard line. And Hampton's offense selects to go on the ground initially. Our USPS starting lineups, and that, after that two-yard pickup, the backs and receivers for Hampton, Smith, Barnes, Smith, Compton, and Blount. We just got to look at Robert Smith, the halfback. It's going to be imperative for Hampton to get some solid yards rushing the football today. Henderson, Steiner, Clement, McCall, and Johnson are your offensive line. Joe Taylor says Steiner is the best of the lot. On second and seven, Robert Smith 
goes nowhere fast because he is tracked down. But I think Tim Blow that time, number 87, the outstanding defensive lineman, the junior, is going to be called for a face mask. And that's going to give Hampton better offensive room to work with. And you see, got the big meat cleaver out and almost took his head off. So I don't think that was intentional. And that's such a tough interpretation call on officials. Loss of three on the play. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, 15 yards from the previous spot, first down. Thus negating the loss of yardage on that. Our officials today, you just heard from Jerome Boger, Johnny Forte, Curly Nimmons, Dwayne Burrell, Donald Leathers, and Ronald Taylor. That brings the ball out to the 22-yard line for Frazier and the Pirates. No score early in the game from Aggie Stadium, and there are markers down on the field before the ball is snapped. Well, Dwayne, anybody who's followed Hampton University football over the last couple of years knows that Joe Taylor, a disciple of Bill Walsh, likes to script his first 21 plays. Prior to the snap, illegal substitution on the offense, 12 men in the huddle, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, with everything that's on, on the line in this game, as we take a look at the defensive line for a and Blackstock, Butler, Neal, of course, blow the right end. Very good against the run and the pass. Francis is the hot guy at the Aggie linebacker position. It'll see if the Pirates are able to attack them. You can see some er nerves early on here, Dwayne. a and guys are a little antsy. And there's a lot on the line here. That's the point we were just making a moment ago with so much on the line here. Could it be that the players are a little too much on edge and need to settle down? Well, of course, certainly in the person of a and who come in after last season losing a couple of games to teams who were lower in the standings than they, than they were at the time, and it cost them an opportunity to make the playoffs and win the championship. Prior to the snap, defense outside in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, first down. And then, of course, uh, the playoffs have effectively begun already in the MEAC and here at a and a and knows if they run the table, they win their next three. They're in the tournament, perhaps with a chance to host a first-round game. Hampton trying to stay alive. First and ten from the 22. Smith over the right side and is wrapped up quickly. By Arthur Wilson. Pittman last week, Montreal Pittman had a big interception return. You know, you look at those backs, Horton Freeman and, of course, uh, Curtis DeLoach. They have been, shall we say, quite thrifty in pilfering op opposing quarterbacks. Two-yard pickup on the play. This time, they're looking to throw out of the backfield. Michael Compton is down there, but the ball hung up a little too much, and it was broken up. Well, you know something? Joe Taylor uses the first 21 plays of his offense in any game as sort of like the opening round of a boxing match. It's, it's a feeling out process, and this is just to feel whether or not a t is going to pursue and how they're going to come up in those situations. Now, it doesn't work. We saw a situation with a reverse last week down in Daytona Beach that didn't work, but it set Bethune-Cookman up for a big touchdown pass in the third quarter. I think that was a play that we'll look back on later on as a setup play. Third and 25, Robert Smith over the 20-yard line has a first down and is taken out of bounds. Well, look at here. A team that was so efficient at running the foot, excuse me, at passing the football last week has come out and they're just as efficient running the football. There's that sprint draw action that was so effective against Bethune. Goes between Eric Steiner and Stefan Henderson. And Smith picks up 14 yards and a big first down. On first again, trying to get the ball out to Octavius Cash. The starting quarterback now moved into the slot position. He and Frazier are getting along quite well, which has been one of the tremendous differences in this team beginning to really hit all cylinders. And the fact that they're now healthy. I mean, going into the Norfolk game, they had a number of key pe uh, people, uh, cash included, who were nicked up at the time. And so when you have a nicked up offensive line compounded by a nicked up quarterback with nicked up skill players, you're going to struggle a bit. Hampton's getting healthy now. Much different team. Second and 10 from the 36th opening quarter of play. Frazier rolling out, has his tight end. Blunt. And he's taken out of bounds. Now here, 
in today's game, Dwayne, we have the two best tight ends in the conference, in my opinion, hands down. And they're both underused. It's a safe quarterback friendly right. Have some success, so it gives you play action. Suck people to the inside with your quarterback rolling outside, and he delivers a strike to Blunt, who runs extremely well after the catch. David Blunt is a guy that Joe Taylor wants to get more involved in the passing offense. His dilemma is that he blocks so well, it's tough for him to do that. That 14-yard pickup set up a first down at the 50-yard line. Frazier quickly to Cash. And the A&T Blue Death defense closes. Boy, James Francis doing a good job getting out there in coverage that time. The freshman, Johnny on the spot. And, it, and his pursuit allowed Timothy Blow from his defensive line position to swing out there and stop Cash. That brings up second and ten. Hampton began this drive at the six-yard line. No score, 12-28 to go in the first quarter. More movement along the interior line. Nerves appear still to be on edge. Eric Steiner appeared to be the man moving on Hampton's offensive line. Proud for snap. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. Just a bit overzealous, beating the snap count. And boy, that's just indicative of the intensity in the trenches in this game. Loss of five yards back to the 45 of Hampton. Frazier now out of the shotgun. No score from Greensboro, North Carolina early in the first. Frazier with time to throw. He's out of the pocket. He's being chased and throws it away. In the direction of Atavius Cash. That time, the pressure coming up right up the gut on the inside. Ivan Butler with a relentless pursuit of Frazier. And give a and linebackers credit that time for swinging out into the flat and just distorting the, uh, the pass route that time. And here's Frazier, who really seems a lot more in command than we saw him at Florida A&M two weeks ago. 13 of 25 last week, 124 yards on third down. Time to throw. Well, he was trying to hit Zuriel Smith. And Curtis Deloach was there defensively. And you know, that's just one pass I think Zuriel Smith will wish he had back. This is a strike, a square rim route, and he squares right in front of Deloach, who is in solid coverage. Protection is good up front. They give him a nice lane to step in the middle, and it goes right through his hand. So those are catches that normally he makes. He'll make them later on. And Deloach, who leads the nation in Division I AA and punt returns, is back to receive the punt from Tellus Bolden. And they will try to kick it away from him as often as possible this afternoon. Bolden, who said at the beginning of the season, he guaranteed nobody would run return a punt against him this season for a touchdown. He's going to face a tall order in keeping that perfect today. No score from Aggie Stadium. 11.56 to go in the first quarter. a and gets its first shot when we come back. In Greensboro, North Carolina, our Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Game of the Week. Tally Carr, Mark Gray, Dwayne Ballin with you on what is a picture-perfect Saturday afternoon. This is what Saturday is all about. Great football, big game, beautiful weather, packed stadium. Ah, God bless America. And the junior quarterback, Damian Phillips, brings the A&T offense out to the 25-yard line on first down. The pitch is to Michelle Hollingsworth, the freshman we spoke of. Our USPS starting lineups, the backs and receivers for A&T. Well, Hollingsworth and Smith, we, we know about them. Jones is a talented skill player, as is Ship, but I think the hot receiver is Marcus Bryson. He's got to become a factor. He's the kind of guy that can stretch the defense. Very talented offensive line anchored by Quasim Mitchell, who I think is probably going to be all-conference once again this season. No gain on the play. Second down and 10, 25-yard line. Michaud in motion. And there's Bryson already, Dwayne. Marcus Bryson, the tight end, connecting with Damian Phillips. 
USPS Hampton defensive line. Boy, Scott and Hilton, the bookends on either side of that line were simply beasts in uh, Daytona Beach last week. Woodson had a solid performance as well. Three very talented linebackers. They're extremely quick. Got to stay disciplined. You look at the, deep, the secondary. Travis Coleman was solid last week. A couple of big picks. So, uh, Pirates defense playing well at this point. Third and one for North Carolina A&T. Hollingsworth breaks a few tackles, but is dropped for a loss. Boy, Greg Scott won't get credit for the tackle. You got to give it to Darrell Diab, the freshman stepping up from a strong safety position. But this play is made by number 99. Watch 99 play off his block and force Hollingsworth outside to allow the defensive back, Diab, to step up and make that play. Greg Scott, who Joe Taylor told us he wanted him to get better with his hands, a solid NFL prospect, is doing a better job shutting blocks over the last couple of weeks. Yannick Matthews to punt away to Zuriel Smith, and the Aggies don't necessarily want this man returning back punts too much if they can help it. And this is why, as he spots a seam, he drops the ball, and it's recovered by a t at the 20-yard line. Well, the first gift of the afternoon, the Pirates give it away. If you remember what happened a couple of weeks ago in Hampton, they turned the ball over about five times. They won the turnover battle last week, and here Smith just trying to make something happen. His strip from the backside. Great strip. And Stan Wiley picks it up. So a huge play early on for the Aggies. 49-yard punt turns into a first down and 10 for North Carolina A&T at the 20-yard line of Hampton. And how ca uncharacteristic of Zuriel Smith that is. A drop pass following on the next play by a fumble. Aggies with an opportunity now to strike first. The freshman up the middle has room, breaking tackles with him. Finally stopped by Tremaine Hughes, but not without a pickup good enough for a first down. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Dwayne. Kareem Sanders and Kwasi Mitchell just blocked down that time, took Sam Murphy and Ira Dawson out, seal them to the inside, and that's going to open up the hole. He's going to take it right behind that block and just carry Woodson on down any deeper. Check that. Uh, that's Tremaine Hughes who goes along for the ride as the freshman picks up the first down. But you got to give the big nasties up front credit for that one. The numbers favor the Aggies offensively in the first quarter. Hollingsworth, a couple of yards before the Pirates close ranks on him, leading the way Samuel Murphy. Yeah, but they're going right on the right side of that line. You have a freshman who's still sort of getting his feet wet with this team. You go behind the uh, all-conference performer, and it leads to good things. Hollingsworth, an interesting situation. He actually signed a letter of intent to play at Clemson, but never set foot on campus, opting instead at his mother's behest. He wanted to attend an HBCU, and he decided to cast his lot with the a and Aggies, recruited by the likes of Michigan, major football schools. This man is a major talent. Second down. Hollingsworth running wide. Gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Aggies. Well, this kid just showed you on this five-yard touchdown run the stuff special athletes are made of. He dipped in, danced back to the outside, and then had the strength to force his way into the end zone through a couple of defenders, and the Aggies make the Pirates pay with their first turnover. And that will bring on Pat Simcox for the extra point. North Carolina A&T with the opportunity to go up 7-0. Simcox is true. So A&T with 9.06 to go in the first quarter. Takes advantage of a miscue by Zuriel Smith and scores 7.
Aggie fans are cheering because their boys in blue have gone on top 7-0 in our Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Game of the Week. Our National Cardinal scoring drive, three plays, 20 yards, minute and 20 seconds, efficiency at its best. Well, Zuriel Smith with the gift, far be it from the Aggies to not take advantage of that benevolence. Well, Terrence Patrick now awaiting the kickoff from Pat Simcox. Patrick had been ailing some. Coaches told us he is, he is just about ready to break one, they feel, on one of these kickoffs. Averages 27.9 per return. Goes down just inside the 25-yard line. Well, here's how the Aggies got on the scoreboard first. Zuriel Smith, a normally sure-handed one, looked like he had the makings of a big return, but he forgot to carry the football. It's recovered on the inside by Stan Blow, and then Mishaw Hollingsworth, see, a little dip to the inside, bought him some time, gets to the outside, forces his way beyond the, the pylon, five yards into the house for the score. That 17-yard return of the kickoff by Patrick sets up first and 10 at the 25-yard line for Hampton, which elects to keep it on the ground. Pick up of three, Robert Smith on the carry. The normally stingy a and front, giving just a little bit up the middle right now. You might be, a, be seeing uh, evidence of some of that weakness, you know, uh, with James Francis. Normally able to, the, the Aggie linebacker does a good job coming up in support after the penetration of the D lineman. And right now they're a little vulnerable right there with number 42 in the, in the lineup. Smith, the long set back behind Frazier on second down. Cash in motion. Frazier looking to throw, has Michael Compton. And he's escorted out of bounds. Well, here's another talented skill player that the Pirates have to get more into the flow of the offense. Now, last week, Zuriel Smith did have a big game. Compton was a bit of a decoy. He was open in some situations, but he wasn't able to make too many big plays. I think there will be some things open, especially underneath this afternoon for Compton, and he's going to have to do a good job as possession receiver, Dwayne, moving the chains. That 12-yard pickup sets up a first down at the 38-yard line. Robert Smith running to the left and is wrapped up quickly. Excellent pursuit and tackle. Well, you know, this play is made by a corner blitz that time. Montreal Pittman comes off the corner and watch. See, it's going to force him back to the inside where the pursuit is, and then stepping up, James Francis making a big play. So that time, he's right there in the spot where he's supposed to be to make the play. Six feet, 220-pound freshman is Francis from Woodleaf, North Carolina. Now Cash in at quarterback and elects to keep it. First down, Hampton Pirates throw a wrinkle into the offensive set. Well, that's pretty neat stuff right there when you can pull it off. This is Atavius Cash coming right at you. He was so dangerous last year. I think he scored a touchdown on a quarterback draw like this against North Carolina A&T, and that's what he does so well. He's a tremendous athlete. He's got 4-4 speed as well. He's extremely strong, takes it up through the center of the defense, picks up big yardage. 25-yard pickup now puts the Pirates into North Carolina a and territory. 37-yard line. They trail 7-0. Nothing. Looking to throw as Frazier has his tight end who drops the ball. Normally sure-handed David Blunt just couldn't hold on. Well, they had to, that's the play they wanted, called at the right time, and it was about ready to work to perfection. Because of the play action fake, it was able to draw people to the center because the quarterback draw on the previous play had picked up big yardage. He was open in the flat, set to pick up the first down, forgot to catch the football. Second and 10, 37-yard line for the Pirates. Hand off, up the middle to Darian Barnes, the fullback. And he stopped after a pickup of maybe two by Arthur Wilson. And Wilson stayed at home that time. The sprint draw is designed to take advantage of the pursuit by sucking in the pressure. And that time, Wilson stayed at home playing discipline. Watch number 54. He doesn't buy it. See, so he shoots the gap and is able to track down Barnes, the ball carrier, and hold him to a one-yard gain. Great individual play that time by Wilson, who's adept at stopping people behind the line of scrimmage. 6'1", 230-pound senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. On third down, Frazier's in trouble. 
gets away from some of them, but not all of it. That Timothy blow, Dwayne. <laughs> Man, Tim Frazier did his best Harry Houdini act, <laughs> but Tim Blow stays at home. <laughs> He's not going to buy it. And Hampton, once again, is able to move against a &T. See, look, it's a blitz all out. Coming up the middle that time, Marseille Winder couldn't get him. He escapes that one. Pressure from the backside runs him right into Tim Blow, and he stops him for about a two-yard loss. That brings on Tellus Bolden for what will be a short punt. This for accuracy and positioning. Curtis Deloach allows it to bounce. Excellent punt by Tellus Bolden inside the four-yard line. That's good stuff right there. So the Hampton Pirates trying to figure things out offensively. They trail by seven. The stadium, you see Bill Hayes, his team leads seven nothing. 13th year for him, 154 and 0. Across the field, Joe Taylor, who's in his 10th season, 83, 30 and 1 at Hampton. Both men thinking championship at this juncture in the conference. And Joe Taylor doing an amazing job selling his team after a disappointing loss to Florida A&M that there's still a lot to play for. And A&T, the hurt lingers from two disappointing late season losses last year. After that excellent punt by Tellus Bolden, a &T starts at the four-yard line, and Hollingsworth breaks a big one. Once again, behind Quazim Mitchell and Kareem Sanders, Hollingsworth sees the hole, reads the hole, and hits the hole and just explodes. I tell you, rare is it that you lose the top rusher in the conference and second leading rusher in America and actually not miss a beat. But that's the case right now with the Aggie offense. 19-yard pickup for the freshman who has 38 yards on six carries, and we're at the 5-11 mark of the first quarter. Yeah, but when you got Quasi Mitchell, who's having the kind of first quarter that he's having, I continue to work that hole. On first and 10 after the 19-yard pickup, Phillips looking to throw, has a receiver open. Steve Ship. Number five, Steve. Well, there's Ship, a guy who was frustrated at homecoming because they couldn't get the ball to him. But watch the fake set this thing up. When you have success running, the play action is so effective. That really just sucked. I would I check that. Ike Hilton in there that time, which allows just enough time for Ship to come across the middle, find a soft area in the zone, and make a nice diving catch. The 24-yard pickup sets up first and 10 at the 48-yard line of A&T. Aggies leading 7-0. Play action, but this time Isaac Hilton applying pressure. Still, he gets the ball off, and it's caught by Jamal Jones, who is corralled quickly by Vincent Lewis. Well, that's just great football all the way around. Hilton makes a big play after not being able to once before. And a great catch that time by Jones coming back to help his quarterback out. So I got to admit to you, I don't think I've seen a better one-yard reception this season that we just saw by Jamal Jones. Jones came into the game 24 receptions, 383 yards, leading the team in both categories. That one-yard pickup makes it second and nine at the 47-yard line. This time it's Adrian Parks giving a breather to Hollingsworth. Well, Parks, believe it or not, about six, about 14 months ago was number one on the depth chart. Then a funny thing happened at Florida A&M last year. Maurice Hicks rushed for 236 yards and he never got his spot back. This is a very talented kid. He too has the speed to get to the outside. He's also physical between the tackles. I'm telling you, Bill Hayes has done a masterful job the last half decade or so, just picking up tremendous tailbacks. Phillips' perfect start passing the ball on third and seven. Can he continue? Connects. Pass is complete. The number 81. Boy, great catch that time. Boy, watch it. A little play action fake. All of that and the half roll is set up by the success of the running game. 
and it allows the receiver to get out there in the, fa in, in the flat, and Bud Phillips makes a huge catch. 14-yard pickup. That moves North Carolina A&T deeper into Hampton territory. 2.55 to go in the first quarter. The Aggies and Damian Phillips already lead 7-0, looking for more. Here's the freshman, Hollingsworth, who's already started off impressively. And this time, they go to the opposite side behind De Desmond Long and Dwayne Hammond. I mean, that A&T offensive line right now is just doing a tremendous job at the point of attack. See, they come the opposite way this time, finds a new, good little cutback lane, and that's what I think Hampton's linebackers are going to have to do. Unlike the Wyatt Bone, where you got to guard the option and take away the quarterback, you still got to stay at home and take away the cutback lanes because the Anarchy running backs are so good at cutting back and getting big yards. Second and five from the 26. Hollingsworth this time is met quickly by Tremaine Hughes. We look like Howard's are shooting off through there, didn't he? He absolutely came out of nowhere. <laughs> and Mr. Hollingsworth felt that shot. Tremaine Hughes, 6'3", 230-pound junior, came in as a co-leader on the team with 63 and a half tackles, 47 solo from Tallahassee. Fourth in the conference in tackles per game. And I would suffice to say we have some interested spectators in Tallahassee right now watching this game from Billy Joe's office. Adrian Parks in, picks up a couple before he's met by Gerald Perry and Tremaine Hughes again. And the way we haven't talked about it, the scenario is in place for North Carolina A&T to want, run the table, win the MEAC championship, and perhaps host a first-round game in the NCAA tournament. A slip-up, and they're pretty much knocked out. That's why the folks in Tallahassee at Florida A&M, with a week off before their big game next week in the Florida Classic, are watching this game with extreme interest. Because if A&T loses, fam can win it all. Big call, fourth and one. Flags on the play. I don't think a and got the play off in time. But Bill Hayes clearly was showing his confidence in his offensive unit. When your line is playing as well as the Aggies offensive line is right now, that's a, that's a smart Five call. Snap, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty, replay fourth down. We may see Simcox now. Hayes. A&T's all-time winningest coaches led the Aggies to three Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference titles. Just reached the 100-win plateau this season, 1965 graduate of North Carolina Central. There's only one coach in the history of A&T football who has a losing record. Bill Hayes, however, is the first one to eclipse the 100-win mark. On fourth and six, Hayes elects to go for it. Phillips rolling to his right as... Throw has a man open and overthrows the intended receiver. Perfect play call for the situation because you've had success running the football. A play action fake and a half roll, it sucked everybody to the center of the field. See, all that does up the middle is draw everybody from an open area where Marcus Bryson is and Phillips overthrows him once again. And boy, we talked after him. After the homecoming game I did with Bryce, and he's frustrated because that's been happening a whole lot this season. Coach Gray, question for you as we watch Robert Smith go down underneath the Blue Death defense after a pickup of just a couple. Is that a moral victory for the Hampton Pirates defensive unit, or are they just benefiting from the flag? Well, I think it was a moral victory by keeping the Aggies off the scoreboard, especially when they had moved deep into their, uh, their territory, given that they had scared the, um, you know, basically, well, we'll talk about it out, coming back out of this break. We are done with one in Greensboro, North Carolina. The A&T Aggies lead the Hampton Pirates 7-0. Back with the second. Trail North Carolina A&T 7-0 as we begin the second quarter of our Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Game of the Week. Before we left you, Mark Gray was explaining whether or not it was a moral victory in the last series for the defensive unit of Hampton. Well, a bit, a bit more than a moral victory. It, it keeps points off the scoreboard and it infuses some life back into the Pirate offense and the team in general after a rocky start after the Missouri Smith fumbled and touched him. Pirates offensive units needs to get going in numbers now. Double reverse. Atavius Cash, he's a quarterback. Looking long has Michael Compton. 
who nearly comes down with it. Defensively, Eduardo Freeman was there, but the ball did catch some air. It did, it did, and there was pressure back there, but Compton was open for a hot minute, and Cash could not get the ball to him. You know, and that had a lot to do with the pressure of Blackstock and company. Ivan Butler back there that time, they forced him. He wasn't able to step into the throw, so it sailed on. Remember I was talking about the play previous that set something up? There's another one that will be setting something up for later in the game as well, too. Third down, Frazier to the air, nearly intercepted. Boy, Jamal Horton, he also with four interceptions on the season coming in. Jumped the coverage that time, broke on the ball expertly, and almost made a beautiful interception. This Blue Death defense has been just tremendous in the last few weeks against the pass. Remember last time we were in here, A&T came out playing finesse football, trying to get tricky on defense. It's been blood and guts. Straight physical football on either side of the ball to this point. Now awaiting Bolden's punt, Curtis Deloach. Doesn't get too far before he's taken out of bounds by Edward Jenkins. So North Carolina A&T leading 7-0 will have the ball when we come back. Fans of all ages happy as their A&T Aggies lead 7-0 in the second quarter of our Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Game of the Week. First quarter, a lot of highlights, but nothing major in the way of points. Well, the only major thing was this fumble by Zuriel Smith that was recovered by Stan uh, a Blow, and then Hollingsworth takes it into the end zone. Then you continue to see the impressive first quarter by this freshman who's been following Quasim Mitchell. And then you've got Damian Phillips getting outside, getting the ball to uh, his brother, and then going down the field to Jamal Jones. So a whole lot of yardage, but not a whole lot of scoring for Bill Hayes and the A&T Aggies at this point. Well, his Aggies have the opportunity to add more if they can succeed on this drive. It's Hollingsworth over the right side where Tremaine Hughes and He's Willie Bennett lead game. the charge to stop him. Well, Hollingsworth off to a very nice start. We cannot overstate that. Well, a ts offensive line is playing extremely well, but I think Hampton is content to play bend but don't break defense. I'm sure they'll give up yardage, but if they can keep the Aggies out of the end zone, they'll make that trade because the Aggies are in the top five in scoring offense in America and rushing yards, so conventional wisdom suggests that they are going to rack up the yards this afternoon. After the three-yard pickup, Hollingsworth comes out. Nothing but receivers in the offensive set for Damian Phillips on second and eight. Nearly intercepted as Stanley Archery stepped and was very close to streaking up the sidelines with the ball. You talk about having a radar lock on this ball. Watch this. Oh, boy, hit him in right in the hands. He locked in on that football as soon as it was released. And had he been able to pick that one off, there was nothing but clear sailing between he and the end zone. 6'2", 230-pound senior from Newport News. Sometimes the worst place to hit a defensive player is in the hands Sometimes. with the ball. <laughs> Third and eight, ball at the 42-yard line. Aggies lead 7-0, looking for more under pressure from Tremaine Hughes. Damian Phillips barely gets it away before he kisses the ground. Yeah, that was a linebacker blitz coming straight up the gut that time. He ran a little stuck where he curled up through the center of the offensive line. And uh, Damian Phillips does a good job making the hot read, but with the pressure bearing down on him, he has to release that pass early. He's not able to step into it and get enough mustard on it, and it goes awry. Yannick Matthews on the punt away to Zoriel Smith who fields it at the 22-yard line gets away from about four defenders before he's met quickly and knocked down and he dropped that football once again Dwayne boy I tell you coach Taylor's heart has to be in his mouth this is about every time number eight touches the football in uh, punt formation here early on in the early stages of this contest. I mean, Smith struggling just a little bit, but in all fairness to him, he took a big-time shot that time. Only an 11-yard return for Smith. That brings up first and 10, ball at the 32-yard line for Frazier and the Pirates offense, which really has yet to get on track. 
looking to throw, looking long, looking for Smith, who gets by the defender and nearly makes an impressive catch. He and James McCoy were jockeying for a position down the sideline. Well, there's a whole lot of contact downfield. I think this is a great no call by the official. But again, Tim Frazier with a strike, sitting in the pocket, delivering it, and then watch Zuriel Smith, who'll just go after, find a third jet, and it hits him in the hands once again. Zuriel just a little off. I don't know what happened to the MEAX Offensive Player of the Week to this point, but he's just not himself. Nowhere near that average at the moment. On second and 10, this time they keep it on the ground to Robert Smith, who battles with about six Aggies before going down. Well, they got a good trap up the middle that time. And he was able to find a hole between McCall and Jelani Clement. And he paid the price, though. Smith, 5'10", 205-pound senior from Detroit, averages 65.2 yards per game, three-yard pickup on that one. He leads the team with 522 yards aggregate for the season, seven touchdowns. Frazier under pressure, and he goes down. Well, good job on the blitz call that time by Wayne Hicks, the defensive coordinator. They just put too many people in the box, and then they, they showed him one thing, dropped back, and Blackstock was able to get in there, Marvin Blackstock, that is, and uh, collect the sack. So Frazier, once again, takes a frustrating walk over to the Hampton sideline. Pirates have been unable to penetrate that defensive unit so far. Fourth in the conference, and they are really stepping up so far. Active and aggressive, and they're winning the battle at the point of attack right now. Tell us, Bolden, kicking a deep one over the head of Curtis Deloach. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. A tremendous kick by Tellus Bolden. He had the second longest punt of his career, 65 yards. Very impressive on that last point. Our Coca-Cola Mideastern Athletic Conference scoreboard. Coach Gray? Well, Bethune-Cookman still clinging to their faint but still real championship hopes with a big victory in D.C. as uh, disappointment continues in the nation's capital. South Carolina State making it 22 in a row at Morgan State. North Carolina A&T takes over at the 20-yard line after that big punt by Tellus Bolden. And this time it's the fullback, Talib Smith, trying to break through. Six feet, 275-pound senior from Durham, North Carolina. And you see at the bottom of the pile is Samuel Murphy, who's 6'3", 310. And he looks like he might have taken a little beating on that one-yard play. Well, that rumble you just heard through your television was the clash of those two big young fellas meeting. And there's big Sam Murphy, who was a sophomore, still a work in progress at 6'3", 310 pounds. Wait till they... Wait till he finishes that work. Second and nine. Rolling to his right is Phillips looking downfield. There's a lot of contact down there. No flags and a reception that is absolutely tremendous. Wow. Mar Marcus Bryson just went in traffic and made a spectacular catch. I mean, this is a play action where they fake and then they come with a roll and two receivers are in the same general area and watch Bryson, despite all that traffic with great concentration, he's gonna play on Sunday, folks. That's why you gotta get him the ball while you still can on Saturday afternoon. That 38-yard pickup, quite a disparity on that. You see Travis Oliver, he's only 6 feet, 180 pounds. Bryson, 6'4", 245, so he could out-jump him also. On first down, Hollingsworth is stopped quickly. Tremaine Hughes leading the way. Boy, I tell you, Hampton might have got burned, though, as we look at, at, at that replay, though. Boy, that was tough. That might have been a, that might have been an interception. You know, it might have been dual possession or something like that. But, you know, you're at home, you take advantage of the home cooking. See, now watch Damian Phillips get out here. Let's see one more time. See, there's a, a good, a push off. And then look at it. See, dual possession right there. I guess the tie, much like in baseball, goes to the runner. Well, Coach Gray, you're not wearing a striped shirt today, so. The fullback, Smith, over the left side. It's Gerald Perry on the stop. Yes, the fullback. Coach, coaches wish they did have striped uh, shirts at some point during the season, Wayne. 
our Minnison Athletic Conference Game of the Week from Greensboro, North Carolina, Aggie Stadium. 10.06 to go in the second quarter. Tolly Carr, Mark Gray, Dwayne Ballin with you. This game implications regarding the championship chase all abound. There is a man injured on the field, Kareem Sanders from Raleigh of ANT, a center, 6'2", 300-pound freshman, walking gingerly, as you see. For a freshman coming to school now at 6'2", 300 pounds, to be replaced in the lineup by another freshman, Junius Costin, at 6'3", 280. They weren't that big when we were in school, Dwayne. Well, if they were, I stayed away from <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah, true. So Damian Phillips, who's five of eight, nearly 100 yards passing, brings out the Aggies on third and eight at the 39 of Hampton, looking to throw. There's a flag on the far side of the field, has a man open. It's broken up, but remember, there is a marker near the 43-yard line, the far side line of Hampton. I'm just wondering if somebody was in the neutral zone or if somebody beat the snap count, but Damian Phillips is fortunate that time throwing the ball into double coverage. There was one receiver in the pattern. There were two defensive backs. They had a two-deep zone, helped inside and outside, and boy, I couldn't see who the... I, I think it was Diab, who if he turns his head around, is able to pick it off. Referee Jerome Bogger. Illegal formation on the offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage has been declined. Fourth down. So, as Mark Gray mentioned a moment ago, the Hampton defense bends but does not break. And they'll continue to take these emotional victories uh, so long as they're within a the score. Because they do have an explosive offense. Eerily reminiscent of what we saw at homecoming here in the early stages of this game. Simcox punting away a line drive that deadens at wow. the five-yard line. Tremendous punt. A we have Wayne seen a display of punting in this game. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you hit him, baby. You should hit such a shot so great to the green. Tori, the four-yard line. Well, we've seen an outstanding job of running, and that this crowd support around here is second to none here in Greensboro. Fans turn out in droves weekly. Octavius Cash in at quarterback now. Tim Frazier started, and now it's Cash, and it's Robert Smith around the right side looking for room to run. Great pursuit by North Carolina A&T's defense. Boy, look at the linebackers just strung that play out. You get good pursuit, you get good penetration by the D-line up front that doesn't allow him to cut up inside, and you have great quick linebackers who just string it out, and it leads to only a two-yard game. And Cash has been solid this season, and he's a safety. Major breakdown on the offensive front. Oh no, maybe it's not. Hey, let's take a look at this one, Dwayne. Did Cash escape the end zone? Well, he falls forward. Well, well, he appeared to be down in the end zone. His knee was down, the ball was outside. I guess the rule is they're gonna spot it because the ball didn't come down in the end zone. Boy, that, hey, that's a heads up play by Cash. That's also a huge break for the Hampton Pirates. It certainly is, but and he, he created the play by using his head. He forced the official to make the call, and it went his way. Whistles on the field. Prior to the snap, the layup game on the offense. Half the distance to the goal line. Please stop the clock. Well, please reset the game clock to 8 minutes, 12 seconds. On the plate, we had, prior to the snap, the layup game against the offense. Half the distance to the goal line remains third down. Okay, Atavius Cash with a heads-up play. Being on the field means a lot for Joe Taylor. He has Cash and Frazier, two quarterbacks. He talked to us about having both of them out here at one time. Even though quarterback is Cash's first love, uh, he's a competitor. He just want to be out there. 
and it really affords us some other options in terms of uh, putting in some gimmick plays, but uh, they both uh, are winners. Uh, it's good to have both of those guys on, on the same team. Situation substitutes at the quarterback position. You do like to have the versatility that they both give you, but I think that within the flow of a game, I'm sure you want some consistency up under center, and I'm just wondering how long we'll continue to see cash unless there's something wrong with Tim Fraser, who, as I look on the opposite side of the field, looks like he's none the worse for wear. Tellus Bolden in the back of his on end zone to punt away to Curtis Deloach. Who touches the ball, it's live, and he goes down, pays for that. Melvin Hull heads up on special teams making the tackle. Well, you and I talked. We thought that special teams were going to play a critical role in this game. We didn't think it was going to be the punters. We thought Zuriel Smith and Deloach were going to have major impacts. And Boy, Curtis Deloach is lucky that his little goofa this time doesn't uh, cost him as much as Uriel Smith's did. He just simply muffed the bouncing ball. But nonetheless, a t has wonderful field position. And here is a major breaking point for the Hampton defense. 39-yard punt gives North Carolina a t the ball at the 44-yard line of Hampton. On a reverse. Oh my goodness, it's set up. Boy, that's Jamal Jones. Boy, they had it set up for a hot minute, and you got to give credit to Hampton's linebackers in pursuit for coming along and stringing this play out. Hollingsworth, you got to guard him. He's been so effective. So the reverse takes advantage of the pursuit. And you talk about tracking down from the opposite side of the field. That Greg Scott from his left end position coming all the way over to the right side of the field, shoving Jamal Jones out of bounds. After that one yard pickup, Jones out a breather. Second and one, nine yard pickup, second and one. Phillips decides to run. Picks up the first down, drops the ball. He fumbled. And this is ruled a fumble. Yes. Damian Phillips takes a shot, and right in front of Bill Hayes, who's going to lobby with vehemence, but I think he's going to lose the bat. Alert the play by Travis Oliver of Hampton. That happened right in front of the A&T bench. See, he gets to the outside. Let's see if his knee is down or if he steps out of bounds. Oliver with a solid tackle. I think Vincent Lewis cleans his clock from the backside, and then the ball hits the turf. Watch. Phillips Great play by Oliver. Oliver, once again, we saw him last week in Daytona Beach holding up, I believe it was Taji Paris, keeping him out of the end zone. And this time he forces a strip with Frazier back in the lineup at quarterback. And looking to throw and throwing it away, Carlton Morant was in the general vicinity of the ball. But see, there's the inconsistency at the quarterback position, and so they're just a little off in terms of Hampton's offense. And Damian Phillips right now thinking, geez, Mm, if I'd only held on the ball, we had a golden scoring opportunity, and it goes awry. He picked up the first down, but Oliver, who has a knack for being near the ball, forced a fumble and recovered. Robert Smith out of the backfield. Boy, I tell you, that sprint draw, and then you got James McCall blocking down. Kevin Johnson blocking down, giving Smith a little lane, steps up in there, picks up the first down. Hampton's having some success up front, and they're doing a good job moving people running the football. They just haven't gotten into a flow or a rhythm, and you got to give A&T's defensive coordinator, and they're changing looks. Credit for that. Ten-yard pickup by Smith, who gets the call again. This time, the Blue Death defense reacts quickly. Eddie Ravenel among those responding as soon as they saw Smith hit the line. And see, that time Hampton got no surge at the point of attack. Now, Joe Taylor did tell us this week that his whole philosophy with the no huddle is to pick up the pace through the third quarter, and hopefully by the fourth, he's worn the defense down. Second and seven, Frazier again looking to throw. This time completes it to Michael Compton for a first down. Boy, there's a confident-looking pass right there. That's a staple of the Hampton offense for many, many years. I mean, this came, this, this play right here probably came with Joe Taylor. Play action fake, a little square in, 
Compton sits there, takes the lick, and keeps on lick moving. 12-yard reception for the junior from Fairfax, Virginia, on first down. Parrish keep it on the ground with Smith. Now you see how there's a better flow to the HU offense when they're running the football, getting positive yards, running the ball on first down. It opens some things. Five-yard pickup. Bill Hayes' Aggies took advantage of a first-quarter muff by Zuriel Smith on a punt, turned it into six points, and so far have been unable to score again. And Hampton trying to even the score. It's Robert Smith with room to run up the middle into the secondary. Another first down for the Pirates. Well, that Jelani Clement. I tell you something. He and Smith, both are from Detroit. It's part of what Joe Taylor calls his Detroit pipeline. And watch that big hole right between where number 72 was, pushing people out of there, allows his homeboy to step up in there and pick up 15 yards and another pirate first down running the football. Ball at the 24-yard line. Notice Atavius Cash, the other quarterback, is in at the slot now. Frazier rolling left but being pursued. All he got away from Marvin Blackstock is a minor miracle. Boy, I tell you, Blackstock's going to be seeing that potential sack in his dreams all evening long. Fake the dive to Smith, and this is Blackstock. He's got him, and he can't bring him down. Now you see me? No, you don't. Ends up with a one-yard gain and what really should have been a loss. Blackstock, 17 tackles. Seen the best two one-yard gains we've seen all season in this first half. Smith, this time tracked down in the backfield. First man there was Arthur Wilson. Well, Wilson got there first, and that disrupted the play, forcing Smith to the outside. And it allowed... Asa Evans to come up from his linebacker position and finish the deal. See, when you get pressure up front at the point of attack from your line, it makes it easier for the linebacks, linebackers, pardon me, to come up and finish the deal. Loss of one. You see both quarterbacks, as we mentioned, on the field. Cash goes into motion, and there is a marker down. I don't think Hampton had enough people on the line of scrimmage that time. Prior to the snap, we have the offense, all side, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, remains third down. Now I'm just guessing, but that might have been Stephon Henderson that time. So we thought that Hampton had established some fluidity to its game after struggling in the opening moments and a mental miscue. Well, this is where Azuriel Smith has to step up and make a play. He's out there locked up one-on-one -on -one in Curtis Deloach. Got to look for number eight now. Third down. And that running play goes nowhere. Well, they tried to cross the Aggies up with the sprint draw. And the center of that line stayed at home. And you got to give credit where credit is due, particularly to Brad Holmes, for making that play. And this is something that Mr. Holmes is all too familiar with as his playing time has continued to increase. 6'3", 275 pounds. And on fourth down, here go the Pirates. Frazier trailing by seven, looking towards the end zone. What a great catch nearly by Zuriel Smith. Had it in his hands for a moment. Wow. Zuriel Smith has had several key plays in his hands, and he just isn't able to make it happen to this point. Great coverage by Curtis Deloach. But again, if it's on your hands, you got to think about, got to feel you should take it to the house. The Aggies' Blue Devil defense bends but does not break. A&T leads 7-0. His a and Aggie teammates lead Hampton 7-0. How does one acquire the name Misho? Let's check in with Tolly Carr for more on that. Hey, thanks, Dwight. Misho's having a pretty good game. And talked to his mom earlier in the stand, Sheila. She's a big sports fan, hasn't missed one of his games since he was 8 years old. I asked her about his name. She was a big fan of the University of Louisville's basketball team during the mid-'80s. Larry Misho, that played on that team, was one of her favorite players, so she decided to name her son after him. Another side note, on the sidelines, Misho is getting a lot of information information from Maurice Hicks. Hicks is out, he can't play, but he's offering his two cents worth to Misha on the sidelines. 
And I think he just told Michaud to uh, hold on to the football when taking the exchange from the quarterback. I think, was it Louisville or was it Houston? I think Larry Michaud played for Houston. When he wanted to, uh, what was that team? Five, Five Slam Slamma Jamma. Jamma. Clyde Drexler, Alvin Franklin. Hakeem Olajuwon. Interesting team. Interesting way to choose a name. Loss of two on the play. And did you know that they used to call Larry Michaud Mr. Mean? Nice note, Mark. Thanks for sharing. Oh, I just, you know, that's what I do. Second and 12, ball at the 28-yard line for North Carolina A&T, leading 7-0, 2.38 to go, and there are whistles. I'm just amazed that as I watch the A&T offense struggle. Prior to the snap, the layup game on the offense, five-yard penalty, remains second down. It's reminiscent of the last time we were here. How the Aggie offense just couldn't seem to deliver the final nail in the coffin until the fourth quarter. Uh, they were making, uh, there were penalties, there were drop passes, uh, there were incomplete passes that they weren't able to convert. And here in the first half, had it not been for the Zuriel Smith fumble, uh, we probably would be scoreless. Second and 17, ball at the 22 yard line. ANT trying to mount an offensive attack. And they get a little, but not much. Jamal Jones on the receiving end. Well, you know, you got to give credit that time to the Hampton linebackers for not buying that fake. I mean, the play action fake was designed to, designed to cause some confusion. It doesn't. The linebackers, you had Hughes, you had Woodson and Autry all in pursuit. And by the time Jones gets around the corner, he was running into a sea of white. Big play. You know, it's it's third and 12 at the 28. You hold them here, you get good field position for your offense. Third down, Damian Phillips going to the air. Steve Ship was open, but he and Phillips were not on the same page. And as I talk about homecoming, we saw a series of bad passes by Phillips, and that once again was a pass that if he gets to Ship, Ship is perhaps able to rack up the yards, rack as and run after the catch, and maybe even pick up a first down. This pass sails on him. Hampton's defense steps up. Smith has a chance to give his offense great field position once again. So Yannick Matthews comes on to punt. He had a beautiful punt earlier. Gets this one away, but it was partially blocked. Zoriel Smith looking to return. Gets up to the 45-yard line. He was tripped up by Timothy Blow. And this is a defensive lineman at 6'3", 260, getting down there on special teams. And this is the second time we've called his name. Well, that's just, hey, I, hey, he just stepped up. He, he, he's going to have to make my all-conference team at something. Because you got a guy 6'3", 260 pounds. And look at Willie Bennett coming off the corner. This is the second time. He's getting a half step closer each time. A&T's going to have to make an adjustment. 36-yard punt, 5-yard return. Hampton with first down at the 45-yard line. Frazier looking to run for his life. He is met by three A&T Aggies two of whom hit each other, fortunately for Frazier. Well, he just was able to slide up in there, and as he goes into his dive, they're going to, both up high, clash into each other. See, he, he makes a good decision early, and man, wow. I think that was Blackstock in there, and I couldn't see who was on the bottom that time. <laughs> That's a violent collision between two teammates. And Tim Frazier, hey, he played in the City Poly game in Baltimore in high school. And, Dwayne, that's like the oldest inner-city public rivalry. It's a Thanksgiving Day game, and you've seen a lot of talented players come out and go to Division I football. I guarantee you, he's had his clock cleaned a few times before that. a and came into this one ranked 12th nationally among Division I AA schools, but in historically black colleges, the Black Sheridan College poll, they are are number one with a bullet and you know this is one this is another uh, ingredient in this mix right now that we didn't talk about NT also playing for the Black College National Championship they run the table they win the conference probably the Black College National Championship they also get a chance to host and this is a tough place to win if you're visiting for the first time on second and four Frazier leads Octavius Cash a little too much and he was really demonstrative as is Cash after that pass he likes, look, Tim, Frazier looks like a lot like he did against Florida A&M from the standpoint of just being too pumped, too geeked. You know, he, he, this is a pass, you know, take a little bit off of it. He's too pumped up right now. 
because Cash is out there opening the flat. Calm down, young fella. And third and four. Zoriel Smith with the reception at a first down. And maybe that will get number eight started. Because he's been open, passes have been there, and that's the first one he's able to haul in. But he's limping just a little bit. He's favoring, he's favoring his right ankle. I'm wondering did he twist it as he, as he went out of bounds or, or did he jam it when he planted? But we're going to watch that. 12-yard pickup, first down, 37-yard line of A&T. And North Carolina A&T's defensive unit once again with Ivan Butler leading the way, drops Hampton's running game. And Hampton is going to take a timeout here, but I don't like the way number eight is moving right now. If you look at him, Dwayne, as he walks over towards the Hampton sideline, he is not walking. Well, he's walking gingerly. Mid-Eastern Athletic. Limping just ever so slightly. Mini Eastern Athletic Basketball Tournament, believe it or not, is months away. <laughs> March 4th through 9th, 2002, Richmond, Virginia. For more on it, www.meagsports.com. Yeah, but I'm anxious to see right now what kind of physical condition Zuriel Smith is in. Now, this is a kid who came in today needing only two receptions to break the career mark. And see, watch, he comes down right here. I can't see whether he cut or whether he jams it, but I know after he goes out of bounds, he goes back into the huddle, and he, he was limping noticeably. Smith, 6'2", 180-pound junior from Mechanicsville, Virginia. On second and 12 from the 39-yard line of A&T, it's Frazier looking to throw over the middle. Has a tedious catch, not enough for the first down. Eduardo Freeman covering. Well, there was a one-on-one -on -one situation where Cash from the slot comes right across the middle on a bit of a skinny post, finds the open area. The ball is a little low, but that's a stick by Freeman to jar that ball loose. That's now if you're you're a safety and you're out there just playing center field and you get a chance to tee off on somebody across the middle, you just saw the personification of teeing off on receiver. So it's still 12 yards away from a first down. On third down, under pressure, Frazier lets it fly. The closest player to the ball was Eduardo Freeman of A&T. The closest Hampton Pirate, Michael Compton. Yeah, but the closest <laughs> Aggie to the football before he released it was Timothy Blow. And that's probably why <laughs> that pass went fluttering off to the far east. And here we go. Another fourth down situation in A&T territory. It looks like Hampton's going to roll the dice and pick it up again. 37 seconds to go in the first half of our Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Game of the Week. Tim Frazier, not overly impressive numbers so far. He and the Pirates, fourth down and 12, 39-yard line. They trail by seven. Handoff to Smith and the A&T Aggie Blue Devil defense is not full. Well, if you're going to go for it on fourth and 12 near midfield, I'd assume you're going to crank it up. But the Aggies defense steps up. That's a, that was a strange and interesting call. Very vocal Arthur Wilson leading the Blue Death defense off the field. The fans here at Aggie Stadium giving them a rousing round of applause. Well, you got to wonder, will Bill Hayes crank it up with Damian Phillips struggling? Or is he content to take a knee and go in with a touchdown lead? This is an interesting call right here, but apparently he's going to spread him out, try to pick up a touchdown. Phillips right under 100 yards passing in the half so far. On first down, he's wrapped up by Samuel Murphy. I'm thinking they're proud. Well, they're hustling. A&T is trying to get a playoff. We're inside of 15 seconds now to go in the half, and the Aggies clearly are trying to run a play. No gain on the last play. Second and 10 from ball at the 38-yard line, and now it appears as though they will not run a play, will allow time to run out in the half, be content with the 7-0 lead. Well, not exactly a uh, textbook first half for the Aggies, 
they are able to take advantage of a turnover and turn it into points. And as far as Hampton is concerned, you know, they got to be happy about just about all the aspects of their aspects of their offensive performance, with the exception of Zuriel Smith. Got to find a way to get number eight off the snide. He clearly isn't the same Zuriel Smith that we saw in Daytona Beach last Saturday. Well, despite what appeared to be considerable yardage movement, especially early on for North Carolina A&T with Michelle Hollingsworth off to a big start. The Aggies still were only able to come up with seven points. Well, you know something? It's a situation where, much like homecoming uh, against Florida A&M, there were opportunities for the Aggies to seize command, yet they have kept the visitor in the contest. It'll be interesting to see whether or not Hampton can take advantage of it in the second half. A&T leads at the half of our mid -Eastern Athletic Conference Game of the Week, 7 -9. Nothing. Back from Greens with back at Greensboro, North Carolina after this break. ANT leads Hampton 7 0 in our Mid Eastern Athletic Conference game of the week at the half. Time for the Wittenauer Band Show. First from Hampton University, the marching force.
the marching force of Hampton University and our Wittenauer Band Showcase here at halftime of our Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Game of the Week. Dare Hampton Pirates trail North Carolina A&T. Carolina A&T leads Hampton 7-0. Bank of America is a proud sponsor of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Football Game of the Week. They're even prouder to support and honor student athletes who balance the extraordinary demands of athletics and academics. This week, Bank of America is proud to honor Jermaine Hannon of South Carolina State. Hannon is a four-year starter at center and a civil engineering major with a 3.2 GPA and a two-time selection to the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference All-Academic Team. After graduation, Jermaine plans to get a master's in education in recognition of his fulfilling the goals of a true student athlete, Bank of America is proud to contribute $1,000 in Jermaine's name to the General Scholarship Fund of South Carolina State. Our congratulations to Jermaine Hannon and South Carolina State. Our Bank of America classroom champion, a and by seven at the half. But nothing, halftime of our Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference football game of the week. Time for more of the Wittenauer Band Show. It's the Blue and Gold Marching Machine from A&T. Show us some tender love. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at one of the most versatile flag pulls in the MEAC. So please put your hands together for the versatile ladies, better known as the Golden Delight. such as City High Remix and put your hood up. those Aggies out. Come on.
The Blue and Gold Marching Machine of A&T University in our, in our band showcase. Lawrence Mark Gray, Dwayne Ballin back at the half here. A&T leads at 7 nothing. You're not surprised at what you saw in the first half, are you? Oh, not at all. You know, when you got team coached by Bill Hayes, team coached by Joe Taylor, two tough, hard-nosed physical teams, and that's what we saw in the first half, physical, hard-nosed football. Time to look at our Xerox first half highlights. Not too many in the way of scoring. Well, we go to the U.S. Postal Service halftime highlights. And Dwayne, as we talked about it getting physical early on, Zuriel Smith looked like he was ready to turn a punt return into something something significant. He fumbled the football, and it was significant for A&T because two plays later, well, three plays later, Misha Hollingsworth capped that 20-yard drive by forcing his way into the end zone. And Hollingsworth has really stepped up to the challenge here in the first half. Here, as you can see him with Yeoman work once again, breaking tackles, getting into the secondary. He finished the first half with 30 yards. Then we'll watch him right now. This is Damian Phillips. On one of the few times he was able to get outside the pocket and go downfield to Marcus Bryson, the legitimate NFL prospect, with a Sunday afternoon catch. Atavius Cash replaced Tim Frazier at quarterback just long enough to save his team from a safety. Heads up play by Cash, falling down but keeping the football out of the end zone. This is Damian Phillips once again. So dangerous when he puts the ball under the shoulder. He stopped by Travis Oliver. The ball is dropped jarred loose. The fumble is recovered and Hampton had stopped the drive. Tim Frazier however continues to struggle in the passing game. Here nobody's open. He takes it up and pays the price right there as he's sandwiched by North Carolina A&T. So as you can see Dwayne, these two teams they know each other extremely well. They're basically the same size in the trenches. They're just as quick as each other in the linebacking and defensive backfield. Simply put, put, they're just bringing it on and they're just cleaning each other's clocks here in the first half. Neither offense able to really get any kind of fluidity. All Though at the beginning, Michelle Hollingsworth looked good for A&T, but these defensive have done a pretty good job, giving up some yardage, but they've held. Classic uh, case of two defenses that are bending but not breaking. We talked about it in the first half. You saw the Hampton defense. They were stretched. They got inside the red zone. They stiffened. They kept A&T out of the end zone. Same thing has been happening with A&T. Uh, Robert Smith has been able to run somewhat effectively against the Aggie defensive front. He's been able to pick up big yardage, but when A&T excuse me, when Hampton gets into the uh, A&T side of the field, things seem to change, and that's the mark of a good defense. Hey, you can have all you want between the 40s. You get inside my 40-yard line. I got to step up, and that's what's been happening this afternoon. So who makes the bigger adjustment, and in what form? Well, when you look at this contest, it's simple. A&T had golden opportunities to seal this game in the first half, and they haven't been able to take advantage of it. Hampton, my friend, is one big Zuriel Smith, Michael Compton, David Blunt, or Robert Smith play away from being right back in this football game, and I'd be anxious to see if this game is tied in the fourth quarter, can the Aggies finish this team? You know the Aggies have struggled over the last couple of team seasons finishing in the fourth quarter. I'm anxious to see if Hampton can tie this game up, how a t is going to play with the championship on the line in the fourth quarter down the stretch. It's 7-0 at the half right now. North Carolina A&T holding on to that lead. Second half promises to be very interesting. Back to Aggie Stadium after these messages. And I'm sure, though, you want some more points on the board. Oh, most definitely. That Hampton defense is really, really stingy today. And uh, we can't get our running game to go in. It seems like we're a little bit off kilter. But hopefully we can get it going in second half. They've tried to test you deep, but it seems like you've been able to keep that big play off your back. Well, our secondary is getting better and better every game. In fact, they're getting better every play. So hopefully we can keep it going and get a touchdown and, and ice this thing today. All right, Coach. Yeah, good luck in the second much, half. Tally. Thank you, Tolly. Bill Hayes' offensive unit will get the opportunity when the half begins to take over as we take a look at our halftime stats. Mark, these numbers belie the lack of offensive production as far as scores go. Well, it's amazing. You know, Hampton is just about on pace to do what they normally do in terms of uh, what they average offensively. Uh, A&T, as Coach Hayes would, would attest, would like to have more than just 60 yards at the end of the first half. But again, I hearken back to homecoming where the numbers were familiar except for the turnovers. You know, a the difference in this game is that the Hampton turnover has led to seven A&T points. The A&T turnover has led to no points. Everything else, just to watch, equal amount of penalties, uh, almost the same in terms of time of possession. And, you know, as long as A&T doesn't get the run game cranked up, 
Hampton's got to feel pretty good. Our Xerox halftime stats. We told you this game has major bearing on the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference Championship race. These are the updated standings. Factored, factored in are the earlier games today, Mark. And Florida A&M with the week off. They have but one conference game remaining against Bethune and Cookman. A&T knows if they run the table, they finish seven and one in the conference. They go to the one double A playoffs, probably win the Black College National Championship and host a game. And we are underway in the second half. Curtis Delo with room to run on the kickoff breaks through just beyond the 45 yard line we're hanging on for dear life was Christopher Parker Boy, Parker just strung it out and they couldn't get a block on Parker see you see number 23 see 54 right there wanted to pick him up but instead of you know a block in the back he was able to uh, avoid the block in the back but not before a 39-yard return by Deloach, who found a second gear. And the A&T has great field position to start the second half. At the 42-yard line, leading 7-0, Damian Phillips brings the Aggies out. Drop ball on the play. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? When Phillips went back from the snap, he did not have the ball. And Hampton... Looking like they got the football, but we haven't had an official indication yet. It'll be second down. Looks like it's going to stay with the Ag. Well, you look, watch the... Well, he never had the ball from center. And that was just a breakdown in the exchange between Phillips and... Check that. Remember, uh, Sanders went out in the first half, didn't he? I think we've got Junius Costin in there, and there's a different exchange between the second string center and the first string quarterback, and there may have been some confusion there. Two yard loss on the play, but ANT will retain possession. Parks has checked into the context. He replaces Hollingsworth behind Tyler Smith. From the 40, it's Parks. Breaking into the secondary, and he is met quickly by Tremaine Hughes, who's having a pretty good day defensively. And if Hughes doesn't make that play, he's easily going to pick up another 20 yards because of the seal to the inside. Look at those down blocks, some of that counter tray action coming towards you. He, look at the feet work. Picking the seam, finding the hole, and then ultimately paying the price for picking up about five yards. Third and five from the 47-yard line for North Carolina A&T. Opening moments of the third quarter, our mid Eastern Athletic Conference game of the week, and there are markers on the field. Somebody must have moved early. I was kind of looking for Marcus Bryson to be a factor in that play. Prior to the snap, we have an illegal snap by the offense. Five-yard penalty remains third down. It'll be third and long for the Aggies. Ball now their own 40. So now line. we have some problems with connecting and getting synergy between the center and the quarterback. That's right. Devon Scott has replaced Kareem Sanders. So it's not costing in there at the center position. It's Tevon Scott. And as you can see, you know, Bill Hayes told us it looked like his team was a little out of kilter. They certainly have not started well here in the second half. On third down and 10, Phillips to the air. Has his tight end, Marcus Bryson, who breaks away from Tremaine Hughes. And, and it takes about Marcus three half the cars to bring him Parker. down. You got to get him the ball. <laughs> you know, it's like Keyshawn Johnson. Get him the ball. Get him the blank ball. And that's what happens. A 12-yard pickup when they need only nine, and it's nothing fancy. I mean, he just, it, it was almost like a tight end screen, and he just made it happen after the catch. Bryson from Lawrence, South Carolina, 6'4", 245-pound senior. That leads to a first down at the 46-yard line of Hampton. Boy, it's getting tight up in there. Defensively, the Pirates close on Adrian Parks. And see, Scott not able to open the hole as effectively as Sanders was. He just doesn't get off the ball quick enough. And when you're running that straight dive up the middle, if the center doesn't get off quick enough, it's going to, you know, thwart that play at the point of attack. And Parks paid the price for it. Second and nine for the Aggies. 11.57 to go in the third quarter. A&T up 7-0. It's Hollingsworth over the right side. 
dragging a couple of pirates with him, but Greg Scott managed to hang on to bring him down. Boy, but I tell you, it's getting physical up in there. I mean, they are some. Boy, those big guys up front are just locking in on each other, and it's a war of wills. I mean, this is really a championship caliber contest. Two-yard pickup on the play. Sets up third and seven for the Aggies. Well, this is where Hampton has had trouble all afternoon, stopping A&T on third down situations. Hollingsworth, the freshman, with his first start, replacing Maurice Hicks, the All-America. Phillips in trouble. Greg Scott got a big arm around him and brought him down. Well, Greg Scott will get credit for the sack, as well he should, but he ought to give half of that sack to Stanley Autry, who's going to come from the outside on a blitz and force Phillips back into him for the sack. And Hampton has not been extremely successful at getting pressure on the quarterback with only 13 sacks to this point this season. Two-yard loss, Yannick Matthews putting off to Zuriel Smith. And there will be no return. So Hampton, the defense holds in the opening series of the second half. Can the offense tie it up? More after these messages. Hampton trailing A&T 7-0. A&T punter Yannick Matthews has dodged that proverbial bullet a couple of times, Mark. Boy, Willie Bennett is, seems to be getting a half step closer with each successive punt. And boy, look at it. Boy, I mean, you talk about a whiskers length between a successful punt and a drastic turn in the momentum of this game. We're going to have to watch that. First and 10 for the Hampton Pirates at the 16-yard line. They have 84 yards to go if they want to tie this one up. Robert Smith around the right side, and the Blue Death defense reacts quickly. Well, that time, James McCall, Jelani Clinton, got great push, and it allowed the back to just pick his way through the hole and pick up about four yards. And see Hampton continuing to stay in the no huddle, picking that pace up, trying to wear the Aggie defensive front down. Second and seven. Frazier rolling to his right. Has a receiver. It's Michael Compton. Boy, Compton getting blanketed that time. I tell you, once again, Asa Evans playing that whip linebacker, which is a hybrid safety slash linebacker position, lining him up, teeing off on him after he makes the catch. But again, Compton, the hot receiver today, finding the open areas in their zone and making the Aggies pay. 16-yard play sets up first down. Back to the ground go the Pirates, and here come the Aggies to greet them. Well, the Aggies are aggressive up front. I mean, that time, they just hold them up and let the linebackers come up and finish it. I mean, there's nothing fancy about that play. You know, Hampton is, is, is doing a good job right now. They're, they're jabbing. You know, they're, they're, they're sticking like that right to keep the opponent off. You got a feeling sooner or later they're going to go for the big knockout. Second and eight. Defensively, the knockout comes from the freshman, James Francis. And, you know, for this kid to be thrust in a starting role under a fair amount of duress, Dwayne, uh, you got to give him credit. Look at him. I mean, he's just unabated to the running back. Somebody blew an assignment in the teeth of the offensive front for the Pirates, and that allows the freshman who, as we talked about earlier, if you're joining us, is replacing Bryce McLean and quit the team. Frazier looking for Compton, overthrows him. And we got some laundry on the turf. But Tim Frazier, Tim Frazier, pardon me, had some serious pressure coming from the outside. Looked like that might have been Timothy Blow. And I don't think... Holding on the offense, they've been declined. Fourth down. So you, you hear one of the uh, North Carolina a t defensive players being very vocal. Our sideline microphones picking him up. They are keyed up because this defensive stand was quite impressive. It certainly was. So I guess we could say he was vociferous in his enthusiasm? A bit. Would that be good? That would be good. Tell us Bolden, back to punt. I've learned so much from you this year, man. <laughs> I owe you so much. <laughs> Another booming kick by Bolden. Six Curtis to loach back. This one rolls into the end zone. 
Tellus Bolden has really teed off on a couple of punts in this game. Wow, one of the few times that you'd like to see your kicker put it into the end zone. Bolden with a couple of clutch howitzers this afternoon. Well, Bolden puts the A&T Aggies back at their 20-yard line with a 60 stadium in Greensboro, North Carolina, where the A&T Aggies lead Hampton 7-0 in our 2001 Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Game of the Week. Tellus Bolden, Hampton's punter, a tremendous average tonight. Suffice to say, he is bringing it. Look at his, you know, nice, good drop, great protection, and he has been making a name for him himself this afternoon. That last punt, 67 yards. a &T with the ball, Michelle Hollingsworth bottled up behind the line of scrimmage by the Pirates. Well, I know the Aggies like to establish the run on first down, but I think they would do themselves a service with some more play action and work in the center of the field of Marcus Bryson on first down. I mean, Hampton is doing a good job just teeing off on the running back right now. And, you know, a and whole thing is we're going to pound on you, pound on you, pound on you, and hopefully you break in the fourth quarter. To this point, Hampton doesn't look like they're ready to break. Vernon Woodson dropped Hollingsworth for a four-yard loss. So Phillips now faced with second and 14 at the 16-yard line. Whistles on the field. Play stops like that, it's normally against the offense. Prior to the snap, delay of game on the offense. Five yard penalty, remains second down. Well, if this offensive inefficiency continues, the defense is going to have to win the game for the Aggies. You know, that, and to this point, this has been one of their better efforts this season, but it would help. And Bryson comes out. I'm a little shocked about that as ANT goes to what, three wides? The Aggies are now set second and 19. At, they're on 11 yard line, leading 7 0. It's Hollingsworth. And he's met by Vernon Woodson, but really doesn't give up. Well, that's. <laughs> you gotta be a tough nut to run tailback here in Greensboro. You know, that was the thing that made Maurice Hicks so special, his ability to punish defenders for coming up and trying to tackle him. And Michelle Hollingsworth, a true freshman, who really hadn't had the intense weight training during an offseason. Look at him. I mean, he runs right straight into a linebacker that outweighs him by about 40 pounds and really forces him to exert himself to make the play. More whistles, Dad, on the field. Hampton's defensive unit, same as a and defensive unit, has been challenged and pushed throughout this game, but has yet to really bend. You're absolutely right. I mean, Disregard the flag. There were only 10 men on the offense at the time. Second down. So that was just for practice. Been a lot of practice that we've seen this year. Bill Hayes, a and Aggies lead the Hampton Pirates 7 0 in the third quarter. Our Mid Eastern Athletic Conference game of the week. Tolly Carr, Mark Gray, Dwayne Ballin. Happy you decided to join us this evening. This one, the winner, is still in the championship chase for the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference championship crown. Phillips rolling to his right. Has Jamal Jones along the sidelines. Not enough for a first down. Well, Dwayne, that play, <laughs> I just, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's, it's like 19 yards and you run a, what, 12-yard route? You know, I, I'm a little amazed by that. You know, you, you really didn't give yourself, a, uh, obviously you, you're playing safe because your defense is playing so well right now, apparently. Yannick Matthews on to punt. And Zoriel Smith fields at the 45 and is off like a jet. Smith with a tremendous return inside the 10-yard line. Big return by Zoriel Smith. Well, he had a muff in the first half, and as you can see, he's still limping. But number eight just made a great play, and the momentum has swung back to the side of the Pirates. Near, nowhere near 100%. He just hit the seam, exploded to the outside, and the Pirates are knocking on the touchdown doorstep. A 48-yard return by Zuriel Smith. 
And that leads to this. Six points, Robert Smith. Well, a t gets kind of burned by going a little bit too conservative. And Joe Taylor, Tim Frazier, and Juriel Smith can celebrate. We thought coming in, Dwayne, that this game would turn on special teams, you and I did. We talked early in the week, and wow! Tim Frazier exhorting Smith. We're in this one. Extra point by Bolden is good, and we're tied with 6.15 to go in the third quarter. Zoriel Smith does the job on the punt return, teeing it up for Robert Smith to putt home, and it's a birdie for the Pirates. Frazier and the Hampton Pirates are rejuvenated. They have tied at 7-7 with 6-15 to go in the third quarter, our National Cardinal scoring drive. Now, this is efficiency. Oh, certainly. One play, six yards. And it is a run by Robert Smith. Takes only four seconds. And Hampton, boy. Tellus Bolden purposely kicking away from Curtis Deloach. And Marcus Bryson, the tight end, catches it. Well, let's take a look at Zuriel Smith getting his team right back into the contest, showing confidence. Watch him go to the inside. Then he dances outside and hits the Jets right there. Bad ankle and all. Able to avoid Asa Evans right there, cut it back up inside and take it down inside the 10 yard line. And now the pressure's on Damian Phillips. He's gotta make a play with his arm. Hampton has done a good job collapsing and thwarting the A&T running attack with Hollingsworth or Parks. I think you gotta start looking for passing plays early in drives now. First and 10 from the 27. New ball game, it's tied. a and has to get moving. Steve Ship on the reception, and Travis Coleman is there defensively. Yeah, but when you got a guy that's as good as Ship out there one-on-one, -on -one, you got to get that ball down to him so he can make that catch and run afterwards. I mean, it's a five-yard reception that could have easily picked up 15 if the pass is better. And Hampton playing with a lot more confidence. a and little trepidation in their step right now. Second down and five. It's Hollingsworth, and he is stopped quickly by Isaac Hilton into the backfield. Well, the Hiltons and the Scots on that pirate offensive front just teeing off right now. They're sitting at home, and they know that if they stay in their lanes, the ball's going to come right to them. And you talk about a great job of playing off the block to make the play. You got to give big credit to Isaac Hilton, who's moved into the starting lineup after his big performance at Bethune-Cookman last week, proving that he was oh so worthy. Hilton, 6'5", 250 pounds, sophomore from Charleston, South Carolina. Big play for Damian Phillips. He's under pressure, rolling to his left. Has Jamal Jones falling out of bounds, but was it a reception? Watch Damian Phillips getting outside the pocket and delivering a strike, and you only need one foot, and I'm not quite sure. No, good call by the officials that time, and Hampton clearly has the momentum of this game on their side right now, and he was going, Damian Phillips was going in the direction of Bud Phillips, a guy he knows pretty well, Dwayne. Let's watch Willie Bennett coming in on this punt by Yannick Matthews. This time he gets it away cleanly, no pressure. Smith being backed up by a nice punt by Matthews. Turns the corner and goes out of bounds. Well, you can see that he's not at 100% because they had it set up for him to turn the corner and he just couldn't get there. If Zuriel Smith is 100%, he's probably still running right now. But again, the momentum is clearly on the side of the Pirates right now. Smith, 17.7 average, punt returns, returned three punts for touchdowns against Virginia State in the Urban League Football Classic earlier. That a 47-yard punt, 14-yard return. On first down, it's Christopher Parker. Well, there's his Mr. Versatility. This guy does it all, whether it says a receiver, on special teams and punt and kickoff of coverage. It's kind of like their Steve Tasker type. There you see him picking up a big first down as Tim Frazier in the Pirate offense gained more confidence. Offensive line giving him a great time. 
And they're executing efficiently right now. 12-yard pickup leads to a first down. They go to the ground again, but that is really going nowhere because the Blue Death defense is responding. Well, Carlton Miranda on the carry. It doesn't show up as a big play, but they pick up about three or four yards. And again, it sets up the play action. And we've got an Aggie down. Arthur Wilson, the linebacker, a starter who's having a solid game. Wilson writhing in pain. 6'1", 230 pound senior from Charlotte, North Carolina, entered the game with 37 tackles, 15 solo, has been very active throughout this one. Well, let's check out what happens to number 54 here. See if there's, ooh, maybe he took a knee to the shoulder or something because he was already on the turf. Well, considering the fact that Bryce McLean, one starting linebacker, quit the team this week, Charles Parham, another one, has a knee injury. This is the last thing that Bill Hayes wants to see. Perhaps he was cleated. Perhaps somebody uh, caught him with one of those spikes digging into the turf. Hopefully it's nothing too serious and he'll be able to get back into the lineup. But while he's out, the sophomore Charles Robinson, a 6'1", 225-pounder, steps into his shoes. On second and seven, Frazier looking to the air, hits a bullet to his receiver for a first down where he's gang tackled. Zorio Smith wouldn't go down, bad ankle and all, comes out of there with the football. And Dwayne suffice to say, the real Zorio Smith has now shown up. We've certainly heard more from number eight in this second half. I don't know who that evil twin was <laughs> that showed up wearing the number eight jersey in the first half, but this is Smith on a square end, climbing the ladder to haul it in, taking a shot there from Deloach with some help from Asa Evans, and he won't go down. On first down, heads up play in the backfield defensively. That's that Asa Evans, once again, coming from the backside, number 29. If he doesn't make that play from the backside, you can see it's set up. Good push to the inside. He's going to take it to the outside, but from the backside, Evans is able to grab him around the legs and hold him to a two-yard gain. Second down, man in motion is Christopher Parker. He's the man on the receiving end of the pass, and he has a first down before he's eventually wrestled down. Big pickup by Parker. Swing pass, three receivers, trips to the near side. He's the second man out there in the layered pass route. The receivers got out to lead him. He has the speed as they seal the defenders to the inside to just continue and move that ball inside the 15-yard line. It's amazing to watch the confidence which is fueling the offensive efficiency of the Hampton Pirates right now. 21-yard pickup leads to first down. Carlton Morant on the carry. So Hampton University, which trailed opening of this game 7-0, has tied it and now appears to have momentum on its side. Well, I told you, I wanted to see if Hampton would tie, how a and would respond. And the Aggies haven't responded too well thus far. They went three and out on their offensive series with a, a series of gaffes. And now, Hampton looking to take full advantage. Parts on second and seven. Frazier, time to throw, lots of it. But finally, under pressure, throws it away. Boy, I was dangerously close that time to being uh, uh, intentional grounding as Vir Virgil Neal. See, look, all day, great protection, but then at the very last minute, Neal gets in there, and while he was in the hands of Neal, Frazier's able to get rid of that football and save a negative game. So the Pirates now have third and seven at the 12-yard line. Score tied 7-7, 2.04 to go in the third quarter. Couple of heads-up plays by the Hampton quarterbacks. Talk about cash in the first half, saving that safety, and Tim Frazier right there not taking the sack. They won't show up in the stat sheets, but those were two big plays. Lone setback is Robert Smith. Parker wide out to the near side. Well, I got to believe right now the hot receiver in this pattern could be the tight end Blunt. They haven't called his name here in the second half. I'll be watching number 87. Timothy Frazier, sophomore from Baltimore, took over as the starter a few weeks back. 
has begun to really come into his own. Technical problems addressed with the clock, and now we're set. Third and seven. Ball at the 12-yard line. Game tied at seven. Frazier rolling to his right. Back across field to the tight end, just like Mark Gray said. What? Touchdown, Hampton. You can see it coming. You knew coming down there inside the red zone that you got a big physical target like Blunt, a screen with the misdirection to the backside, and Hampton leads, and my has it gotten quiet here in Greensboro. Little misdirection, he faked the roll, came back to the opposite way to Blunt, and they sealed the defenders to the inside, which gave him a lane down the sideline, and Blunt takes it to the house. 12-yard wow. touchdown play from Frazier to the tight end, David Blunt. Add the extra point by Tellus Bolden, and Hampton now takes a 14-7 lead. Just under two minutes to go in the third quarter of our Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Game of the Week here in Greensboro. North Carolina A&T, Bill Hayes Aggies led 7-0 and now find themselves looking up. Well, I saw, let's take a look at it one more time. Tim Frazier does a good job of selling the roll to the weak side, and then he comes back to the strong side of the field, and the Aggies were just blown away by that fake, and Pittman could not keep him out of the end zone, and David Blunt, who came in with only 15 receptions, a transfer from the University of Virginia, with arguably his biggest catch of the season to this point. His third touchdown catch of the year. Eight plays, 63 yards, 242, time lapsed on that. Our national car rental scoring drive, and Mark Gray diagrammed it for us verbally, and it happened. So now it's the Aggies' turn. Once again, they keep it away from Curtis Deloach on the kickoff, but it's Bryce at the big tight end who has room to go, and his big body gets near the 50-yard line. That's the same Marcus Bryson who took an onside kick late in the fourth quarter against Florida A&M at homecoming, some 60 yards to the house for the end zone, and I think that they got to get him more involved in the offense over the last 16, 17 minutes of this football game. As you can see, he's so dangerous after the catch, if you get him the ball on short passes, he can make some things happen. So Bryson and the Aggies offensive unit now trail by seven, first and 10 at their 47 yard line. Michelle Hollingsworth, the freshman, is tracked down and fast by Greg Scott, the All-America. Well, the difference between the Aggies that we saw earlier and this, this team, Hampton's defense is not wearing down. They seem to be still just as fresh and just as quick, despite having to chase down a very talented back. And remember, Hollingsworth, as a freshman, 18, 19 years old, nowhere near as strong as Hicks, a senior, 22, 23 years old. He's not making the Pirate defense pay for tackling him the way Hicks done. That's playing real big to this point right now. Second and eight, ball at the 49-yard line for Hampton. Double reverse, triple reverse, back to the quarterback. Nice defensive play, what a way to stay with it. It was a flea flicker, it worked to perfection, but Damian Phillips, too much air under the ball, which allowed the secondary to break on it and keep it out of the hands of Steve Ship. Ship had run a post pattern and come open and had a step. See, watch, all the confusion from Hollingsworth to Jones back to Phillips, who sets up and lofts it out there prior to taking a shot from Hilton. And he put too much air up under it, and it wasn't able to be caught, but I think we got some pass interference, huh? Well, he allowed Travis Coleman to get back and defend and stop it. But I think there was a pass interference call, which is going to give the A&T offense 15 yards in the first down. So a huge call that time for the Aggies. Talib Smith, the big fullback, now in the game. On first down, it's Michaud Hollingsworth. That's Parks. Adrian Parks, not Hollingsworth, Adrian Parks. Boy, in that time, A&T got great surge at the point of attack. They go right behind Tavon Scott, 
and they pick up a big first shot. Look at the center, and they're going to go right up the gut. Little trap action, and he leads. And Parks with some nice footwork and vision picks up 21 yards and a big Aggie first down. Ball down at the 15 yard line of Hampton. The Pirates defense certainly being tested now. Adrian Parks, nearly 30 yards rushing in the game. Well, they cry. The, the screws have been tightened in this one, folks. 22 seconds to go in the third quarter. Flags on the field. And now official to separating players. No surprise that emotions are running high on the field. I'll say they are. The call against a and As Patrick Jordan getting rather acquainted with Greg Scott. Two guys probably discussing how to uh, solve the national debt. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty, first down. And of course, Jordan says raise taxes, and Greg Scott says give folks a tax break. First and 15, Phillips under pressure, and he goes down. Big play Isaac by Hill Gerald Perry. Mm. The Hampton Pirates defensive unit pushed, holding after three. 14-7, Hampton leads, end of three. Hampton leads North Carolina A&T 14-7 in our MEAC game of the week. Third quarter belonged to Joe Taylor's Pirates. Yeah, the Pirates really got jump started thanks to Zuriel Smith. You know, veteran great players make mistakes and then they make up for them later in the game. And this is where the momentum swung. Zuriel Smith, big punt return deep into Aggie territory. That set up the six-yard touchdown run by Robert Smith and Hampton grabs the lead. Then, a little swing pass out here. Christopher Parker, he's able to take it down deep inside a and territory. Now, on self-correction, David Blunt's catch right here and run afterwards into the end zone is what gave the Pirates the lead up by a touchdown. 15 minutes to go. Joe Taylor has sold his team on staying in the championship hunt, but they've got to do better than they have been in the past in the fourth quarter. Those numbers, something to keep in mind. Phillips to the air. Has a receiver inside the 10-yard line. The tight end, Marcus Bryson in the center of the field. Give him the ball. I got the feeling you're going to see him with the ball a lot here in the fourth quarter. He gets off the line. He throws his block, runs a little hook, sits in the center of the field, and hauls in the strike from Phillips. We've seen more of both tight ends in this second half. They're the best two tight ends in the league. You got to get them the ball. With all due respect to everybody else who plays in the position, these are the best two tight ends in the MEAC. They got to get the football with the game on the line. Third and five, conversion numbers do not bode well for a &T. Ball at the 10-yard line, movement along the interior line. Dwayne Hammett. The 305-pound senior jumps. And like Bill Hayes hit the nail on the head coming out of the break at the end of the first, you know, just prior to the start of the second half. a t just out of sync. Prior to the snap, there was the layup game on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains third down. And how does that happen, you know, when you're coming out of, you know, first to second play after, um, you know, after the quarter break? Might be some nerves setting in just a little bit. Your whole season down to its last 14, 15 minutes. There's an old saying, pressure will bust the pipe. Ball at the 15-yard line. Third down for Damian Phillips and the Aggies. They trail by seven. Trying to connect with Jamal Jones. And defensively, Willie Bennett was right with him. Well, Pat Simcox. Should probably be coming in here to try a very makeable field goal for him. Simcox, 5 of 13 for field goals this season. His longest is 35 yards. This one from 32. This is so big. Ante needs to really get on the scoreboard here. 
psychologically more so than on the scoreboard. He missed it. And it is no good. So the Pirates defensive unit holds. Pat Simcox cannot make good from 32 yards out. So Hampton continues to lead 14-7. To my sweetie Gladys, who has been my rock, I leave our home and all of my stocks and bonds. Such a good provider. To Melvin Jr., our family business, and the Lincoln Continental. I love you, Dad. And to my younger son, Trey, I leave you the one thing that brought us together. My Wittenauer. The Wittenauer? Yo, that fat pop. Wittenauer, fine jewelry, of course. Travel provided by U.S. Airways. U.S. Airways and U.S. Airways Express offer over 4,600 flights a day to more than 250 cities throughout the U.S., Canada, the Caribbean, and Europe. Fly U.S. Airways. I told my father I wanted to grow up to be a teacher. Wouldn't you rather be a doctor, he said. It's a noble profession, and you could become wealthy. That may be true, I said. But without teachers, where would doctors come from? Travel provided by U.S. Airways, offering Envoy Class to Europe. U.S. Airways premium transatlantic service designed for the business traveler, featuring comfortable sleeper-style seats and personalized service. U.S. Airways to Europe. Hampton leads North Carolina A&T 14-7, 1345 to go in the game. Standings for the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference means so much in this game. Boy, if, if this score, score holds, A&T would drop to four and two in the conference and uh, effectively be out of the championship picture. It would set up Florida A&M with a victory next week over Bethune-Cookman in the Florida Classic. They would claim the championship and probably get the automatic bid to the one double-A playoff. So everything that the Aggies have worked for from the end of the last season to this week is all on the line here in the next 13:45. Well, the Pirates have work to do themselves. They have but a seven-point lead and much time to go. On the ground, on first down, James Francis, the freshman, who's played admirably. Well, you know something? I admire Hampton and, and really uh, re respect them staying with the game plan, telling us they wanted to make sure that they continued to run the football. And when things, you know, it looked like A&T was getting ready to seize momentum or, or score, they stayed with the run game. They've had some limited success, and they waited, 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 and it loosened some things up for the passing game. Second and seven, ball at the 23-yard line of Hampton. Play action, rolling to his right is Patrick, and he's being pursued. And James Francis, the freshman, all over the field. Well, he couldn't get the sack, but he disrupted a play. And Robert Smith tried to pick up Asa Evans and does a decent job, which allows Frazier to get to the outside, but Francis tracked him down. Talk about having the radar up and lock and load, delivering the knockout punch. Remember, folks, Francis was pressed in the duty only after Bryce McLean quit the team earlier this year, earlier this week, and Charles Parm suffered a knee injury. And he has played solid today. This is the biggest game of his career, and he has had a solid effort. But you talk about big plays, here it is. Third and seven. Hampton with the ball at like their own 23-yard line. If a can hold here, their offense should get decent field position. They're asking for the crowd. The Aggie fans get up. Out of the shotgun, Frazier. And it's Travis Ridley dropping the ball. Had the reception, but couldn't hold on. Well, I don't think that even after that reception, he was going to be able to break a tackle and uh, pick up the first down. So the ANT defense has stiffened once again. Can the offense now take advantage? Tell us Bolden back at his own seven yard line to punt away to Curtis Deloach, the most dangerous man in the nation with punt returns. Bolden averaging 45.2 in the game so far. This one 
a success in that Deloach never had the opportunity to touch it and return it. Man, Bolden is playing himself into MVP contention with his performance today. I mean, this kid is averaging about 45 yards in his punts. He's had two of the biggest punts in his career. And moreover, he has kept the ball out of the hands of Curtis Deloach, which has hampered the field position for the Aggies all afternoon and forcing them to drive long distances. You gotta drive long distances, it forces you to call more plays. That 34 yard punt sets up AT at the 43 yard line on first down. Phillips swing pass to Adrian Parks. Boy, that's Steve Ship. <laughs> he just threw a block and he took out, I think that was Stanley Autry. Man. Interesting. We talked about Misho at the beginning of the telecast, and he had a good first quarter, but Parks, that five-yard pickup, underscores that he has been the man on the ground recently. He certainly has, but that fellow right there on your screen, Ship, with a big block, and he cleaned the clock of Woodson. That sprung him for five yards. Second down, play action. Fake rolling to his right as Phillips. He's being pursued, and he's bottled up. Throws it away. Boy, that Greg Scott is just in a zone right now. I mean, they tried to play action fake, and Scott didn't buy it. And then he tried to give him a move. Scott didn't buy that. And so before he got to the sidelines, Phillips just had to toss it out of bounds. Greg Scott is having an All-American last couple of weeks. Might have taken him a couple of weeks to get things cranked up this season but he has been a beast the last couple of weeks. Scott will be playing in the Hula Bowl in January. With good reason after these last couple of weeks. Third and five for a and trailing by seven. 11.56 to go in the game. Isaac Hilton was applying pressure, and I think Phillips heard him. Well, still, he delivered a great shot to his brother Bud. And Bud let him down. So I guess that means Bud has to sleep now on the, on the uh, bottom bunk. Or does he sleep on the top one? Bud is the younger brother. I think usually the younger yep. brother sleeps, sleeps on, the on the top. Yeah. Yes. Is that what happens? That's the way it works in my house. Ah, your brother. I thought the I thought the older brother slept on the uh, the bottom for safety reasons. <laughs> Yannick Matthews on the put. Here comes Bennett. Nearly got it. Zoriel Smith backed up to the six yard line. But Willie Bennett on the other end once again was bearing down on a near block. Wow. So Hampton gets the ball back with a seven-point lead, 11.44 to go. Back in a moment. Oh, Hampton leads North right Carolina a and 14-7. Different mood on the Hampton bench from earlier in the game. Let's check in with Tully Carr for more on that. Well, guys, I'll tell you what. That series before Hampton put any points on the board, Michael Compton was getting all his teammates hyped up, saying, guys, what's up with the free jewelry? Mathematically, they're still in it, and I think that they actually believe they can get a piece of this conference title. It'll all start with the win today versus North Carolina a and They're certainly playing like that, Tully. On first down, Robert Smith into the secondary. Number six. Robert Smith on the carry. And that offensive line of Hampton now really beginning to open some holes. Jelani Clement, James McCall. Right up the middle. Check that. That was Steiner and, and, and Clement who opened the hole that time as Smith leaps through there and picks up a first down. That's the first time at the Aggies started looking as though they might be getting a little tired first down, Hampton in the University. interior of their unit. Ball now in their 11-yard pickup line. for Robert Smith. First and 10 at the 19 for Hampton. Timothy Frazier, sophomore quarterback, leading the Pirates. Off to Smith, who has 75 yards before that Smith carry. The carry. That was his 23rd of the game. Short gain on the play. Just an efficient job this afternoon of Robert Second Smith. And moving the chains and keeping the Aggie linebackers honest. And here in the second half, their receivers have been able to get deep, not necessarily way into the secondary, but underneath and loosen up things. And then they've been able to follow with swing passes to the outside. James Smith. Francis and the ANT Aggie defense have to bear down. Shot clock winding down. They do get the playoff, play clock. Frazier under pressure throws it. The receiver and the defender have it, and there's a flag on the play. I'm 
I'm wondering, is there going to be some pass interference call? It's in the secondary. Well, judging from the reaction of Montrell Pittman there at the bottom of the screen, it doesn't look well at all. And you see Marseille Wander shaking his head. For the Pirates. So I think it goes against a and Frazier once again getting to the outside. Boy, what a shot. Man. Ivan Butler forcing him to release it early. It looks like it was intercepted, but there is a flag down. Ricardo Freeman, check that, Eduardo Freeman, did appear to come up with the football. Referee Jerome Boger and his crew talk over the transgression. Boy, Butler really nailed Frazier on that last play. One of the things that Fred Keis, the offensive coordinator of Hampton, told us was that something Frazier had to deal with in his first real start, he got his bell wrong and yeah. hard. Against Florida A&M on a, on a big interception, which really kind of turned the momentum of that game. He took a shot. He went out, and he never really was the same after that. Till that point, he was 6 of 6. Afterwards, I think it was something like maybe 3 of Pass 9. Pass on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the, spot, from the previous spot. First down. So things go well for the Hampton Pirates of Joe Taylor on that play. Wow, the Aggies had opportunities to really seize command of this game in the, fourth, in the first half. They weren't able to do it. They let the do left the door open. Hampton's done an outstanding job of making adjustments uh, at halftime. One question, was it an interception and then taken away because of the penalty? Which I think it was an interception. I mean, I, I'd really like oh, to see whether or not it, it indeed was pass interference. Well, Bill Hayes certainly doesn't think it was. Let's take a look right here. Well, it couldn't have been. It couldn't have been on Freeman. Well, Freeman was the only defender with Michael Compton when the ball arrived. That is indeed a tough call against the Aggies. In any event, it sets up first and 10 for Hampton, which leads 14-7. Robert Smith over the left side, breaks a couple of tackles. Number six, Smith on the carry. Before he goes down, courtesy Ivan Butler. Well, Joe Taylor told us in Daytona that he thought Eric Steiner was his best lineman. Where do they go? Behind Eric Steiner. And they pick up positive yards. Hey, boy, that, hey, there's a look right there for you. <laughs> Healthy young man, Ivan Butler. Big fella. Yes. <laughs> so we're looking at second and seven for the Hampton Pirates. Tim Frazier and his teammates trailed 7-0 to begin our Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Game of the Week, but have taken control with a big third quarter. And Robert Smith on the ground and picks up maybe two. He's met by Marseille Winder. Boy, that time the little misdirection doesn't fool anybody. Wearing blue and gold. Watch right. Try to fake like it's going one way. Come back to the next side. And Winder wasn't having it. Good job staying at home. Understanding your responsibility, staying in your area, and making the play. Smith, senior from Detroit, is the lone setback on third and seven. Here comes Marvin Blackstock. Blackstock gets the sack from the backside because Timothy Blow in the near, on the front side just kind of forced him to sit in the pocket. And the Aggie defense steps up once again. Well, I tell you, this Aggie defense has done a yeoman job here in the second half with the exception of the drives after the Zuriel Smith punt return. Poor Robert Smith was just tossed aside like a piece of salad <laughs> by Marvin Blackstock. And this punt by Bolden will roll him. Deloach will try to return it. Bad moves. Well, that's one where he should have taken the bounce and falling on the ball. And Brian Sawyer once again with a big play on special teams. And the Aggies get the ball 
And it'll be interesting to see after this break if they can find a way to jumpstart their offense with a championship on the line with 7.49 to go. He being tended to along the sidelines. He's had problems with his left knee in this game. Cannot put very much weight on it at all. He's had a pretty good second half, and the Aggies certainly need him back in the lineup as they trail by seven. And it's amazing the job that Hampton University's defense has done against North Carolina A&T. The Aggies come in averaging 243 yards rushing per game. This afternoon, they have been held to 80. I mean, that's just an outstanding defensive scheme by Alonzo Lee and company and executed to perfection thanks to great performances by Greg Scott and Isaac Hilton, among others. That 47-yard punt sets up first down for A&T. And it's Steve Schiff falling out of bounds, but there is a marker at the 15-yard line. That's thrown in the area of holding. Ineligible receiver downfield, that will be assessed to A&T. Well, you know something, I think that with Damian Phillips struggling, passing the football, if he is indeed going to be the signal caller for the balance of this afternoon, might have to take a page out of the book we saw in Daytona by Alan Suber and let him make some plays on the ground running the football. We had an ineligible receiver downfield on the offense, five-yard punter from the previous spot, replay first down. Mm. So it's first and 15 for North Carolina A&T as the penalties begin to mount. A&T with 10 of them right now for 70 yards. And, uh, you know, missed assignments. They haven't been able to make anything happen in the passing game. You know, you get something positive finally, and it's taken away on account of a penalty. Not going well for the Aggie offense right now. Ball at the six-yard line in his own end zone. Throwing is Phillips. And it was a similar route to the one you just saw. Steve Ship was the intended receiver, could not stay in bounds and hang on to it. No success on the rollouts. Just no success at all in the passing game. Unless they're going to Bryson. I think he's got to be a factor here down the stretch. You got to get him the ball. Tolly Carr, Mark Gray, Dwayne Ballin with you from Greensboro, North Carolina. Our Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Game of the Week at Aggie Stadium. A&T started off leading 7-0. Hampton, a big third quarter. Now leads 14-7, 7-17 to go. Huge play for the Aggie offense here. Got to start picking up some yardage. Second and 15 from the six. And the Hampton Pirate defensive unit with big Greg Scott and Isaac Hilton leading the way says no. Aggie offensive front just getting no push at the point of attack. You know, I think they're really missing Kareem Sanders right now at the center position. And uh, since big number 74 left the lineup, the Aggies run game has been drastically weakened. For whatever reason, since Sanders has been replaced by Tavon Scott, uh, the offense, the rushing game, I should say, has been woefully inefficient. Two of 12 third down conversions for them so far. Third and 12, Michelle Hollingsworth back in the game. Phillips looking to throw, looking very long. And it's caught by Jamal Jones. And there should have been a face mask flag on that as well because, well, check that. They're calling it incomplete? They're calling it an incomplete pass. It appeared to be caught by Jones. Willie Bennett was there defensively. Wow, let's see this right here. Yeah, it falls out of his hands. Great call. Wow. He did yank his helmet, though. That gets you a $20,000 fine in the NFL. Well, Bennett may have gotten away with one there. Out of his own end zone now. Wow. Yannick Matthews trying to punt it away, gets it off. Zoriel Smith floating towards the ball at the 49-yard line. Spins his way out up the sideline. Zoriel Smith, six points, punt return. Talk about coming back. The real Zuriel Smith makes a real big play once again. That's his fourth TD of the season. None bigger than this one. And we may have just seen the North Carolina A&T championship hopes fall by the wayside. 
And believe it or not, some fans are getting up and beginning to leave with 6.08 to go. Well, he gets a lane, and he spins. That's just a great spin move, and when he gets to the sideline, nobody is going to catch him. Great downfield blocking at the very last minute to spring him into the end zone by Brian Sawyer. And the Hampton Pirates, with two gritty, gutty performances, are on the verge of ending another team's championship hopes. And Smith on the sidelines with a noticeable limp does not affect him when he's receiving a punt. He seemed to have gotten more dangerous since he started limping. It's amazing. Jim Brown was like that. Wow, that's lofty uh, status for this young fellow. Well, only in the sense that he would limp after a big play. That spin move right there spun him to the near sideline, and he's just able to tight rope down the way and take it to the house. And Zuriel Smith, you got to feel so good for the young fellow whose fumble on the first punt of the game gave A&T their only score this afternoon. He came back to set up the first touchdown with a big punt return this time he takes it all the way to the house and wow but they missed the extra point Smith redemption on the play oh, boy he sure doesn't look like that when he's on the field and receiving a punt something, something about adrenaline boy Deloach fields the kickoff he also is dangerous in this situation Pride might have been a touchdown saving tackle made was that Thomas Bolden again? It sure was. Thomas Bolden, who continues to guarantee nobody's going to take it to the house against him, has made his third touchdown saving tackle in as many weeks. He threw his body right in front of Deloach, who is 6'3 and 205. Boy, if he doesn't make that tackle, Deloach is still running and we got a different ball game. Bolden clearly Hampton's MVP in my book right now. So the ANT offensive unit now with a considerable way to go up. Trailing 7 to 20. Bad snap on the play. Phillips can only fall on it, and things are beginning to get away from the Aggies. Yeah, they're falling apart. You know, we talked about that pressure busting the pipe, and the Aggie pipes are cracking right here. You know, I was anxious to see if Hampton got up, how, we, how they would handle playing from behind. And frankly, the Aggies have not played well trailing today. Joe Taylor's Pirates lead 27 with 528 to go. Phillips has a receiver across the middle. It's Booker T. Washington. The first time we had a chance to talk about our good friend Booker T today, the T does, in fact, as we found out before the game, stand for Talia Farrow. a and in a hurry-up situation. 20-yard pickup on the play. Ball now at the 47-yard line. Phillips to the air again. This time he underthrows Jamal Jones. Well, it looks like that time he threw a split-finger fastball. Something from the Kurt Schilling variety. <laughs> the bottom just fell out of it. Well, Coach Gray, from what you've seen, is a and offense capable of climbing this mountain with under five minutes to go? At this point in the game, I'd have to say no. I mean, uh, Phillips just doesn't look confident at the helm of the offensive unit when he has to throw the football. And his receivers are open. They've run nice, precise, disciplined routes this afternoon to get themselves in a position where they can make the play. And he continues to struggle at getting them the ball so they can do just that. And I'm just amazed how you have a guy as good as Marcus Bryson, and he's not a factor in the offense at this point in the game for in, in the second half. Seemingly, whenever he wants to get open or he makes a play in the secondary, he can. And, you know, they haven't emphasized getting the ball to their all-conference caliber tight end. Tight. Timeout down on the field. Our Coca-Cola NCAA scoreboard. Some national games. Division one. Miami at a time at Chestnut Hill. That's Oklahoma. Cold. <laughs> Oklahoma over Texas A&M. That's a final. Watch for Oklahoma and Nebraska in the Big 12 championship. Villanova and Hofstra. Villanova doubles up on Hofstra. Elon, located not too far from here, loses to Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern having the best back in 1AA now for sure. Now that Hicks is gone and Adrian Parks, excuse me, Adrian Peterson, who can really play. You mentioned Hicks. I want you to think about this. How would this game be different if Bill Hayes were able to use him? Address that 
reset in a moment. Fourth down for a &T. Seven to go, and here come the Pirates. Boy, that Woodson. Mm. Vernon Woodson. Just a straight bull rush coming from the outside. Kept Damian Phillips in the pocket. Somebody misses an assignment, it looked like. And before he got a chance to get back in the three-step drop, he sacked. Look, you just miss an assignment. A stunt. He curls right outside. Locks in on the quarterback. And there's Bill Hayes pondering what may have been. So now, the Hampton Pirates take over with an apparently commanding lead, 20 to seven. Joe Taylor can now position himself to play with confidence. And they're gonna continue to run the football with Smith. And remember, every first down that you get eats up about two minutes. So if they get a first down here, the best a and can do is get the football back offensively with about two and a half minutes to go. The point about Mari Six not being in this lineup for well, a &T. He knows where the holes are. He can hit them more efficiently. He doesn't have to think when he gets to the outside. He hits them uh, uh, a lot quicker. And in so doing, he's able to make bigger plays. He's also a more physical back. So guys that have been tackling him like for the first, second, and third quarter are worn down in the fourth quarter. And he's also a better pass catcher, so when he's not running between the tackles, you can get him the ball to the outside. Yeah, he would have made a difference. On second down, it's Robert Smith breaking through another first down. And boy, they go right up the gut. Boy, I tell you, Jelani Clement and Eric Steiner having big games in a very big game. Last two weeks, they have been tremendous. And boy, I, I tell you, there's a mass exodus here in Greensboro. 14 yard pickup on the play. 350 to go, 20 to seven. This score should hold, if it does, it casts a completely different light on games next weekend. Boy, doesn't it? And the folks in Tallahassee right now who are watching are hoping right now that the Pirates can continue to move this efficiently. I know Billy Joe is watching down there in Tallahassee, kind of lip licking his chops at the prospect of facing Bethune-Cookman for the conference championship once again. Alvin Wyatt, he's probably on his way from D.C. down to Daytona Beach right now in the air. May not know these things, but uh, when he gets down there, and he finds out he's got a chance to play himself with a victory in the Classic next week, back into a position where they can claim a share of the championship. And Dwayne and I will have the honor and privilege of calling that contest for those of you watching on Sunshine Network next week. A note on Zuriel Smith, as soon as his play is over. Second and eight from the 21. Robert Smith, very little there. When Zuriel Smith returned that punt, he tied the Division I AA record for most punt returns for a touchdown in a season with four. And he still has more football to play this year. He's got one more game, and you would figure next week he would be, a, you know, Hampton's sitting real pretty. And you know something? It won't go down. Maybe it, he just hurt us. Yeah, maybe. Well, young fella, you earned the right after messing up in the first half you played big you know he made one bad play and made two great plays and that's the difference in the game right now and you got to give credit to joe taylor for selling his team after a disappointing loss to florida a m there was a lot to still play for well on third down <laughs> tim frazier goes out of bounds forcefully and you just see this kid growing. You know, I got the feeling last week that that was indeed his coming out party where he was the captain of the pirate ship. He had solid command of the offense, and he played with a lot of confidence. And today, he just has efficiently directed an offense against a pretty darn good a and D. And there's Bill Hayes, who tried to overcome the loss of Hicks and two starters at the inside linebacker position is Bolden. Nails it. So, Tellus Bolden adds on to it. As Hampton University now has a commanding, seemingly insurmountable lead with 119 to go here at Aggie Stadium in Greensboro, it is 23-7. Pirates in control. 
Pirates now, no doubt about it, squarely back into the thick of the championship chase for the MEAC Conference. And smiles all on the Pirates sideline, and Joe Taylor has got to save that sales job. If he's got a piece of property, woohoo, man, Marcus Price pays the price. Woohoo, Chris Parker. Oh, my goodness. Now, folks, I want you to appreciate this. Now, Marcus Bryson is 6'4", 245 pounds, and Christopher Parker is 5'10", 175 pounds, and he laid his body into Bryson. Yeah, but they don't measure heart. They don't measure toughness. And I guarantee you, pound for pound, Chris Parker, as Marcus Bryson will probably attest, is one of the stronger players in the conference. What a great effort today by the Pirates of Hampton University. You can't laud them enough. And a maligned defense has really stepped up and played big when they had to. Well, Damian Phillips trying to get something. Gets it out to Steve Ship, who's out of bounds. We'd like to thank the media relations director for both schools, Kia Mason at North Carolina A&T, Patricia Harvey at Hampton, who've helped make our job much easier this week. That's Keith Matkins now in at quarterback for, well, check that. Phillips has just checked back in. 108 to go. Hampton in control with a victory. We'll go to 5-2 and two in the conference, 6-4 and four overall. A&T will drop to 4-2 and two in the conference, 7-2 and two overall. Today's telecast, executive producer Johnny Tyus, produced by Rick Walensic, directed by Chuck May, statistician LeCount Conaway. Good to have LeCount back in the house. It's like we got our full house backfield with LeCount in the booth. Provided us with some important numbers. 104 to go. Hampton on its way to victory. North Carolina A&T. Good boy. Doral Diab. Dodged a proverbial bullet that could have added another seven points there. Diab had six points if he holds on. He certainly did. Missed communication between Bud Phillips and his brother Damian. Yeah, those two just haven't got along too well today in the passing game. Talked to a good friend Bob McCain before this game. He was telling me how the Aggies just don't enjoy prosperity. Well, Hampton will atone for losing last year at home to A&T by coming here and returning the favor at Aggie Stadium. And right now, Hampton just out physicaling A&T. There's not a whole lot of smack being talked. Well, Travis Oliver just laid into Jamal Jones at the end of that play. Boy, he certainly did. Good clean shot, though. But uh, uh, my friend Bob McCain, as I was telling you, but I also talked about how much, how different a team this would have been this season for a and if Keith Matkins, a very talented quarterback who throws extremely well, had, in fact, you know, been able to continue to play for an entire season. And it seems appropriate, considering what's happened, that the Hampton defensive unit was able to hold once again. There's... The way it's gone for A&T, our players of the game for this game. Bank of America, Zoriel Smith for Hampton, that record-setting night with that punt return. And Arthur Wilson, you just saw him climbing up, the linebacker on the crutches for A&T. And a historic afternoon for Mr. Smith. He needed two receptions coming into this contest to reach the number one spot all time in terms of reception at Hampton University. Now he's four on top with another game and a whole season to play next year. So the Hampton Pirates will simply let Pirates the clock run out. The layup game on the offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. You saw Adrian Parks there on the sidelines for a and He, too, on crutches. This has been a very taxing game and costly one for a and Well, it's one of those games where the Ag it just appears that the Aggies weren't able to overcome all the distractions of the week. You lose the top running back, Higgs. You lose your top two uh, inside linebackers, and granted, that wasn't a uh, that really didn't play into the game situations, but it did play into the psyches. And they came out, frankly, they were flat. They didn't execute extremely well. And when all was said and done, Bill Hayes' troops just didn't get it done with all the ingredients in place. You're at home, you got two of your last three at your own crib. You had the national championship in your hands. You had the chance to host the 1AA playoff, and it all went by the wayside on a beautiful Saturday afternoon into the evening. And great attendance this afternoon, 13,737. 
And uh, look at Hampton. They, boy, Joe Taylor and Fred Kais. Kais, the offensive coordinator, and Bracey Taylor, the head coach, as they come in here and put together a perfect game plan. And the Hampton Pirates are now very much in the thick of the MEAC championship chase as they dance in Greensboro. 23 to 7, Joe Taylor's Pirates do it to Bill Hayes' Aggies.